call the uh, October 17th meeting of the Historic Districts Commission to order. Um, good evening, everyone, members in the audience, folks at home. Um, and um, we have a few things to take care of in terms of um, assignment of duties. Um, uh, for, uh, we're short a um, voting member on the commission so that a lot of these hearings will have to have the alternate members um, inserted into the vote. And um, for the first hearing, um, um, Thomas, would you um, handle that? Can you? Sure. The Tollefson, uh, yep. 703 Main Street. Yep. Um, and perhaps also um, a 321 Main, second, sure. first and second. Yep. Um, uh, 64 School Street is um, going to be on the November agenda, not this agenda. Um, and 30 Pleasant Street. Um, Justin, would you do that? Um, and 137 South. Um, perhaps, Ben, would you do uh, both of those? Sure. Thanks. Um, and Ben, would you also do 361 Main? Okay. And 1040 Main and 34 Main, I need to recuse myself from, so I'll ask Mike Collard to share those applications and also then to appoint um, uh, voting members. And uh, 45 Middle, um, anybody have any um, issues with 45 Middle or uh, 59 School Street? So 45 Middle is right across from me. It's, it's a neighbor of mine. Um, and 59 School Street is a direct butter. So I think at least for 59 School Street, I should recuse myself. Okay. Um, I, in the past, recused myself for 45 Middle. If we need somebody, I believe I could be objective to that. But otherwise, um, I would prefer to recuse myself for that one. From both well. of them? Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be... Uh, Appropriate? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. And do you want to settle these two now? Do you want to do that now? We can do that now if you want. Okay. So with, with 1040 Main Street, I think... Um, Tomas, were you here on the first hearing? I was not. You were not. So I think that would leave Justin, myself, Ben, yep. and Hans as voting members. So we'd have four... Voting members on that, I think, is that okay, Andrea, to have four? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then on 34 main, um, I think it would be the same four plus uh, Tomas, which would be the five. Madam Chair. Yes. I want to recuse myself for Pleasant Street, 30 Pleasant Street. Okay. Um... Any, somebody else yeah, want to? Yeah, Jerry, I have a question. You're recusing yourself from 34 Main Street. Are you still on the... So I was part of the Historic Society, but is no longer on the board. Um, and I don't see a need to recuse myself, but just wanted to make everybody aware of it. That's fine. Is that yeah. fine? Yeah. Has chosen to recuse herself from that. Yeah. So. Okay. But yeah. you're fine. But it's everybody else is fine with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Just making sure. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> okay. Then 45 middle and 59 school. Um. Anybody want? No conflicts. Okay. So we have four on each of those votes. Okay. Um, it probably would be helpful um, since we've got so many s switchies here um, to announce at the beginning of each hearing who is voting. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, uh, anything else we need to take care of uh, before we get into the applications? Okay, our first application is William and Kyle Tollefson, 703 Main Street, to uh, 
uh, install a brick pathway. Come right up, sure. And sorry, I've never done this before, so give you an idea of what. Great. Um, so right now uh, we have a concrete broken up walkway that leads to our house, which is not historic, and we're just looking to replace it with a brick walkway using the existing dimensions. Um, and we wanted to use the Boston City Hall pavers, which um, pretty much uh, all of our neighbors in Glad Tidings have. Um, no wider, no longer. And you're going to use um, the pattern will be a uh, we were looking to do a herringbone pattern. Mm -hmm. And in the picture of the proposed, um, there's a, it appears to be a granite um, border. Yep. Were you going to do that as no. well? No. Um, we are just looking to do, so a herringbone, basically like a vertical brick along the edges and then the herringbone in between. Okay. But no, not a granite. Okay. Um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? Okay. Commission members? Oh, oh. Oh, sorry. Um, so, um, so I think it's beautiful what you've done to the house. Um, and I think it would be very appropriate to replace the concrete that you have in front of the house uh, with, the, with the pavers um, and in the herringbone pattern. Um, I would certainly be very much in favor of it and I think it would be very appropriate to put that in versus what's there right now. Great, okay, okay. thank you. Any other comments? Um, I echo Thomas's beauty. Great, thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, would you like to make a motion? Sure. By the way, I used to live at 699. Oh. Yeah. My goodness. Yep. Back when the prime set, 703. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I would like to make a motion for uh, an application for a certificate of appropriateness for 703 Main Street to replace a current concrete walkway in the front of the house with a uh, Boston uh, brick uh, pavers in a herringbone uh, pattern with a uh, simple uh, paver etch all around. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're all set. Great. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Tomorrow. Wonderful. <laughs> I guess we have six minutes to um, <laughs> to utilize. Minutes. Minutes. It never happens. Minutes. minutes. <laughs> right. Oh, that's what I was going to sing. Two minutes. Okay, let's start with the August minutes first. Oh, Sherry. On uh, it's page one to I guess page three in the discussion uh, on the Jim Magner uh, application for 219 Main Street. There's a line where we say this is in the discussion about the synthetic lumber for the shelf, and in the text here we say that. Uh, using a composite material for the shelf since it cannot be seen is practical. And I would uh, suggest that we, we say that it's, instead of being practical, that it's acceptable for the certificate, just so that the, the practicality of synthetic lumber is, isn't, the, isn't the driving factor. Right. Um. And we'll steer away from the interpretive. Yeah, so I, it's, I would strike is practical and suggest acceptable for this certificate. Yeah, agreed. 
and, and it's, it can be seen, but it's it's minimized. And I, th I think if we use the language acceptable for this certificate, that's, we're saying it's not a precedent right. necessarily until yeah. we, until such time as we decide. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go in and and suggest another thing under the Father Bill's mainspring item. Uh, let's see, is it the first, I guess it's the second sentence where it originally says, replace 28 double hung windows with a historic replica with six over one Marvin ultimate, which I think is a little bit confusing phrasing. And my recommendation of the minutes would be to strike the words, a historic replica with six over one by simply deleting those words, you're, you're left with a sentence that says that the, the application is to replace 28 double hung windows with Marvin Ultimate simulated divided light all wood windows. Just at, uh, that sentence was sort of confusing and it, just by striking a few words, I think makes it much I more say clear. I remember having a window count I remember discussing what was visible from a public way and that those were going to be rebuilt, correct? We did have a window count. Okay. A total window count and um, the and we determined which ones were, were And that's visible. in the motion. So I that's think the, the minutes motion. are accurate about that. But for I I don't know. That that the introductory sentence felt confusing. Okay. Might be over the top to make that change. But that's my suggestion. And others. Oh, I've got one last one. Oh my! I'm gosh. sorry. <laughs> I've got. We, we do have three more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see again now in the in the motion for the 66 Main Street section. Uh, the last sentence includes the line, corner boards may be synthetic material, semicolon. Synthetic ma material is permissible along the water table. I would suggest striking along the water table and replace that with uh, when a component makes contact with the ground. So the, the resulting phrase within the semicolons would be, Synthetic material is permissible when a component makes contact with the ground and a, the water table. And now I'm done. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Is there a motion to accept changes as proposed by Commissioner Aborn? Uh, sure, I'll make the motion. And to approve the minutes with the um, recommended changes? Yes, I'd make that motion too. Second? second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I, I have one other thing. Um, so um, it's only uh, Michael that's listed as absent. I was absent for that as well. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Just that one on to keep the record straight. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, do we have time to do the uh, September minutes? We can do them later. I think maybe we can want to because Justin will probably have, I have no several <laughs> modifications. <laughs> I didn't want to be so bold. <laughs> the eagle eye. <laughs> okay. Well, our. Uh, Next application is 321 Main Street, um, and hi, Tom, how are you? Tomas will be the um, uh, fourth voting member. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. This is my first time. My our legal counsel is in San Francisco, so so I got the job to handle this. Um, so basically, oh Andrew, you do have. I was wondering if you had it. Okay. Um, I'm representing Jack Conway, our Hingham office, which is right down the street, 321. And we are proposing replacing the existing sign, same location, same square footage, same footprint, but using a composite material um, trimmed out in, in a wood. Um, 
but changing the actual, we call it the lollipop sign fondly, fondly. I don't know if you guys have a. There are two of them. Yeah, it's just the exterior. It's the one that's not on the building. Yes. Yeah, there are two, but we're only proposing the one. Interior? That, um, it's a little bit thicker, but it is, yeah, it's a weatherproof. Sheen. Ex uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of a matte, yeah, not really shiny. And, the, and the thinking is that this is going to be more durable, is that why? You're it is more, so uh, we've replaced most of our signs, our exterior ones, mm -hmm. um, because it's more economical and it's, it's, it just weathers better. So that's what we've been doing for the past 10 years, is just replacing the panels out, so. And, and actually, this will be our first one where we're updating the logo, which is kind of exciting. Is the, uh, <coughs> the green substructure staying and you're just putting a new sign on? We're What's actually going to paint that black. So we're actually, um, we've been approved to paint the building at this point um, white. So that's what we're proposing to the CEO. So other than painting that rest of the lollipop black that's going to stay as is and then you're just going to correct put the correct, correct. Size. and then trim it out and yeah. yeah and then we'll have up lighting on it doing landscaping we're doing a, a renovation inside so we need the outside to match the inside so i'm confused are you painting the lollipop black and keeping that or are you changing no it? we're, pa we're keeping the so the to a square sign correct you're looking to, to replace it with a sign that looks like this. Yes. Yes. And so what's the currently on the building, is that a similar sign or is the, that the current a sign that looks? On the, the exterior top of the roof line is a wood sign. No, we're not going to touch that one. We're going to touch up the paint, but do you guys have this one? Okay. So it, is, so it still says Jack Conway. Yeah, so that we're not touching that one. So We're hoping for more visibility, actually. So is a lollipop? <laughs> so <laughs> is it going to stay a lollipop, or no, is it going to be square? It's going to be square. We're going right, to use the I same square footage, now. but we're going to change the shape okay. to the existing one. So that will be two by two. That was, I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, was that a little, yeah. Now, we, do we have a view, and the application doesn't seem to mention painting the, the post black. Do we mm -hmm. have a? That's true. An opinion on the post being painted black. When you say it was approved, um, who approved it? No, the the the, the, the building. The, the building. The paint. Just the building. Just the building. Yeah. Through through you. Yes. Through you. Oh. you you didn't do the lollipop stick. No. Mm -hmm. uh, However, if we don't paint that building, then we will keep that color. So we will keep the, the, I guess it's green, a teal, whatever this color is, and just put the square sign on. Um, I think we're losing our window of opportunity at this point right now. Oh, yeah. Um, just the timing wise. So uh, I have a question okay. on, on this, which was submitted the lower right hand corner. Mm -hmm. it, it uses that as an example. An example as the trim only, not as the. So your your intent is these fluted these fluted sides with this decorative um, mantle? Not that decorative. No, that was just the only one that I could grab quick for you guys to just give you an indication that it would be trimmed out. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to to do the fluting. Um, if you want it, we can do that. And then what about the the decorative work above at the at the head of the sign? It, it, it's kind of open to you know if if. If there's a request to do that, we can do that, certainly. Okay. Um, Have we approved a synthetic sign? I don't think so. And I don't usually remember. businesses downtown that are historic in the historic district all do wood signs. Right. I mean, there's canvas. Yeah. My feeling, I have no objections to what the sign looks like, um, but I would feel that it would be appropriate if it was a wood sign instead, yep. just to keep up with what everybody else is doing um, in the district. Yeah, I, I 
concur with that opinion. I don't think there's a compelling reason to go to a composite material for the sign. Um, and uh, the framing, it might be good to see the framing, whether we want it fluted or whether we don't, mm -hmm. but just to see what kind of framing you're going to be using uh, might be um, prudent. But, I mean, the sign is meant to be very prominent, so I think that's especially indicated to see what the proposal the is. The trim. The frame. The trim. Yes, to see the, the, the trim. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's the idea of a sign, is to really be out there, be very apparent. Right, which the existing one is not. That's, that's the whole issue. It, it's just a drive-by. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping that with this one, you know, and the trim, that at least it will be a little more visible. But we, uh, we probably want to see it. So you want to see or, hmm, the actual two by two, the actual? Well, whatever it's going to look like. I think you're talking about the, the trim. trim. The trim. The trim. The yeah. trim. Yeah. OK. If you can just. So would this work if I did a little bit bigger with the Sintra board? With, um, hmm, I'm just trying to think of my guy doing the trim on that. OK. I can, I can get a sample. It's a drawing. A drawing is fine. Oh, oh, a drawing? Yeah, what we're, yeah. Not, what we're not seeing in okay. here is what is represented sure. around this sign in terms of trim, what the sizes are okay. in proportion okay. so we can get a better idea. Okay. Um, and I, along with the mounting details, the post Yeah, details. certainly the, the, the post, and maybe that can get superimposed onto what you already have here if you're mm -hmm. going to be using that lollipop. If you're not, then we'd like to see what that would be. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, it, I, I don't support the PVC okay. materials, this member. Right. I'd like to see wood. Okay. And I would concur with Ben on that one point. Okay. And I would just, uh, just to chime in, if, if you're going to do a, a mostly black sign here, um, you may want to pick up on the trim collar of the, the, the main building. Mm-hmm. Um, to complement that or or the main body of the, uh, the you know the building like it is now you know either one uh, I think you know if you do it all in black it might be a little bit too much Just, oh agreed agreed yeah it is going to be white so yeah. it would be matching the yeah and then just the, yeah the trim just kind of picking up something from the right right were you commenting at all on the post Hans yeah yeah mm -hmm. the post white too I would just um I wouldn't I wouldn't make it three colors or four colors. I would just keep it simple and pick up something to tie in the main building, you know, almost like you have mm -hmm. now. But it sounds like the, the post is going to be a little bit more substantial, just kind of. Just prettier, just, yeah, just, you know, bringing it up yeah, to date. It's, it's just a really dated Absolutely. looking so, yeah, sign. Yeah, just you know, tie it all in so you can yeah. kind of look at sign. Oh, and there's the building. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. So we can add the paint color to the post to um, what we decide tonight? We can. Okay. So we have the sign and its composition, the trim, frame trim, and the post paint color. Is there anyone on the commission who's in favor of um, the composite material for the sign? Ooh, that's a definite no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so that's a back to the drawing board then. Okay. Well, you've got your design. You know, you just want to put have on the a, design. Yeah. Put on a different material. That's all. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you haven't already made the sign up yet. Definitely not. Okay. No. So it's just no. choosing your background material. And then you'll get us a drawing of the uh, frame. I'll give you a drawing of the frame. Yep. And Hans's proposal was the post should be white. So. Whatever, whatever you're, if you're going to paint the trim again, just pick up the trim color or of the house, of, you know, the building or, you know, or the body. Yeah, I think it's an off-white. If you, you know, if it's a, you know, a jewet white or something like that, a creamy color, I can't really tell from this, but whatever, whatever your trim color is would probably 
Which is white. Yeah. So it's white and white. We're doing the mullions black. The door will be red. Yeah. Um, but I certainly wouldn't do a red post. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I actually don't, I don't mind the white. The black just kind of goes away. The white, personally, I'm not a fan of it, but. But I think a white post might pop the sign. Um, I think, the, yeah, I think the black is, is super handsome. I think it's just a nice, clean, traditional look that's the white. Are you going to do your doors? Are you going to paint your doors black or anything like red. that? Red. Red. Little pop of red. I got to bring that red in. Would you want to do a red post then? No. Oh. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, what about keeping it the olive color that the post sure. is now? Sure. If we don't paint it, then I would. I would keep it the same same color as the building. Um, if if you really wanted black, isn't a uh, a wrought iron looking support acceptable <coughs> yeah that's that's the way to get black would be yeah. to have it look like a wrought iron support it's not super decorative okay that that's that's a way to get black that's an interesting idea okay okay all right so you want to see the trim Okay, of it. So, Madam Chair, are we? Uh, is there going to be any approval this evening, or uh, are we talking coming back? And you know, I, I think we can give some approval this evening. I mean, unless people disagree, but to, I don't think it has to be that um, complicated. So this would be a, a a motion for a certificate of appropriateness pending. Uh, Acceptable drawing? Yeah. Did I just volunteer to do the yes, certificate? Of okay. And then we just, um, and what, what uh, paint color are you going to propose? And are you going to propose changing it to iron? A metal post? <laughs> we can come Woo. back, with, we can come back with details on just like the, we do with, with houses with the color, right? I mean, correct? Yes. So is it too much? We, you, we need to come back? No, no, no. But to to, to after the fact, I can circulate it. Yeah, do that so we don't have to make it specific on the collar. Okay, so this just would be there wouldn't be another meeting. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Right. We wouldn't have to schedule another meeting. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 321 Main Street. A sign with the. Uh, New proposed Jack Way, Jack, or excuse me, Conway Real Estate um, lettering and logo. Let's see. Um, colors to be determined at a later date. Submitted with uh, uh, the administrator's office, Andrea. Signed to be two feet by two feet. Materials to be wood and a drawing of sign with trim detail around sign as well as post supporting sign mm -hmm. huh? I'll second that all in favor aye aye opposed okay good Thank you. Okay. Make it clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you guys don't need to see me. I deal directly with Andrea. Okay. Correct. Got it. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Back to minutes. Back to minutes. <laughs> Back to the minutes. I'm going to go and get those uh, posters. Any comments about the September minutes? Do you need a chance to read them? I need a chance. <laughs>
I, I do have a I do have a question about 137 South Street. Was there approval given with the basement windows, or did we say that that was outside of our purview because it's not visible? Um, I believe we made an approval for the basement, um, and it was it was below grade. Right, so it so, wasn't part so, of the motion. So it was, you know. Yeah. Um, they could use. A, uh, you know, a different window. There's right. One window down there, so I don't remember it. Does it read like that for you? Um, there's no mention of the of the basement windows, so that would that would tell me that we. Yeah, but there there is. It's actually the last sentence on oh. the south. So. Okay, could give administrative approval. Okay. Everybody done? Any amendments to the minutes for September? Somebody want to make a motion to approve them? I make a motion to approve the minutes for September 19, 2019. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes stand approved. We have any? Um... We do. <laughs> <clears throat> How much time do we have? Twelve minutes. Okay. Oh, I have lots of things. So, um, this coming Saturday, beginning at 10 a.m., there will be a program called Back to Tranquility Grove. If you remember when I was talking to you about the book that the Historical Commission published, this is gonna be a wonderful event. Um, the Conservation Commission is in partnership with the Hingham um, Land Conservation Trust is using the trip into the woods to Tranquility Grove as their fall walk so um, it first begins if you recall the whole uh, uh, the walk to tranquility grove was in honor of the abolitionist picnic that was held here um, where there were literally a cast of thousands um, in that particular in that grove and um, so this is going to recreate some of that. There will be a program in the New North Church beginning at 10 a.m., followed by a walk to down to the Grove. And um, there'll be speakers. There's going to be some music. There's. It's going to be a really nice event. And, you know, it's a great event for kids to see because it's just a nice education um, about something that a lot of people just don't know about um, in Hingham's history. So, um, 
So, and there's a post walk refreshment stop and goodie bags at the Hingham Community Center. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it sounds good. Um, so anyway, I, I really hope I will be I will be walking in the parade. Um, the it the original <laughs> Tranquility Grove, per, the parade to Tranquility Grove on the on the day of the actual picnic. There were. Um, and you can see it, the picture in the book. There were uh, young women with um, laurel leaves and oak leaves around their head, and they were all dressed in white. This was August, though, and they in these flowy outfits. That's not what we're wearing, but we are doing the. We have the traditional oak leaves with. Uh, I think there are going to be some ribbons. Anyway, it's going to be nice. So, um, I hope to see you and all of you folks at home. It's a great event, just 10 to 12 on this coming Saturday. So, and the um, Land Conservation Trust is sponsoring it? It is the, it is conservation and the Land Conservation Trust and then in conjunction with some others like the New North Church and uh, so that's, um, and they did a lot of clearing there because it was very difficult um, to get back there. So it's all been cleared. There's a nice trail. Um, so you should come and see it. That's great. Thank you, Andrea. Why, you're very welcome. Pets welcome? Pets are welcome. Not in the church, but on the walk. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have anything else, Andrea? Do you need me to say half anything else? No, no, I, I know what we're coming to, though. <laughs> we oh, I have, have one calendar. fun fact. <laughs> I, do. I do have a fun fact. I apologize um, for the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you set me off now. Um, on Wednesday, on October the 2nd, the American sci-fi anthology series, The Twilight Zone, premiered on CBS in 1959. Let's see if I have anything else that I can impart. Who's the host, Ron? Uh, oh, Serling. Rod Serling. Oh, wow. Good guess. That's, That's right. Good guess. Oh. I like that show. That was good one. And on the 24th of October, that day, um, Harry Houdini gave his last <laughs> performance at the Garrick Theater in Detroit, Michigan, in 1926. He and disappeared. Course, I guess so. <laughs> these are all the, and you know that all these fun facts are related Landed to Detroit punch. because it was he, he this was is my renowned Shinola. for having people punch him in the stomach and really? being fine, and someone took it upon themselves to punch him when he wasn't ready, and it killed him. Oh, that's right. I think that I, I, I think I remember that too. Yeah. Wow. All right. All right. So moving right along. We got another five minutes. Yeah. Really. No. <laughs> I think we can get started. Okay. Okay. Because we will. Okay. And uh, Justin, you're going to vote on this. I will vote on this. Yes. So, um, 30 Pleasant Street, Sarah Cook. Hello, Sarah. I'm Sarah. This is my first time. This has been so interesting. I wish I was free more Thursday nights. Oh, <laughs> oh you can watch us on YouTube. <laughs> I know. I'm glad I was here early. It was good to see the process a little. Um, I'm here because I wish to extend my backyard fencing. Um, kind of following suit with what the existing materials already are um, and just trying to get a little privacy and more of an enclosed backyard. Um, it's six foot fencing on the left side with a trellis top, solid on the back and I just want to finish the solid, return the other side with the trellis top and then return into the house with full trellis or lattice rather. Mm -hmm. um, 
and six foot on the returns into the house too. And the left would have a single gate and the right would have a double gate. Um, and my hope is to do six foot just to gain a little bit more privacy as well as my foundation sits a little high. So I thought the four foot kind of looked a little off. Um, and all cedar materials as well. Not painted. <laughs> What else can so I the fence on the right, the, the entire height is six feet. Then, yep. Then so the, the solid parts may be about five feet. Exactly. One on top. Yeah. So that's kind of, on the left-hand side, that's approximately what it is. It's five foot with a foot of lattice on top. Which is yep. essentially those photos. Yeah. yeah. That's the left side now. And is the fence along the back line existing now? Half of it. It's my neighbor's. So um, it doesn't go the full property line. I just kind of want to finish it off. And is there a reason you're not um, using the lattice on the top? On the back? On the back, yeah. Just to create consistency, I think, since it's already solid on the back, just to keep with the solid. OK. And then you would do full lattice to the right? Uh, no, full lattice returning into the house, back into the house. So the back and the sides match what's already there, and then full six foot lattice returning into the house, if that makes like sense. To the front of the, of the house? To yeah, the like right into the foundation. The yeah. yeah. Yep. In regarding the gates, you said one side had a double, the other side had a single? Yeah, so to the left it's a little tight, so it will just be a three foot gate, and then to the right it's an eight foot double gate, but all straight, no, no scallop detail or anything. So I think it will just look like a fence. And it's set pretty, I mean, I'm not returning it to the front corner on the right, it's pretty set back behind the chimney, so it's a little bit receded. So are these gates the ones you're proposing here in the pictures? The halo gate will be on the left, but the other gate is not. It's just going to be a plain street. I couldn't find a good picture on the catalog site. Um, but the right will just be a straight, full lattice, double gate. So. On the right, it, it doesn't have the little. It dip. does not. No, it's just going to be. And it doesn't have the arc. No. Just going to be straight lattice. So the returns to the house are all lattice. Full, yeah. And I have a question. Um, on the last page, the picture to the right. Um, um, you say showing four foot height um, and six feet. Is the lattice going to be four feet on the return? I, w I think I was just putting the four foot in there so you could see it versus my foundation. Because um, ideally I want the six foot. So the whole fence will be six foot. Yes, yeah. Just to show the comparison. Why um, want to have the gates matching on both sides? Um, I think I just don't want to really see the gates on the right and just have it kind of look like fencing. So ideally, the double gate on the right will just look like a continuous lattice fencing and not have a detail. Okay. And then and you got a halo on the left. Yeah. I have a shed, a little attached shed over there and a brick pathway, so it kind of naturally calls, I think, for a little bit of a detail. Is there any type of cir circular detail in the house at all, or anything that you would, I'm just wondering why the, why the halo? Um, I think just to grow something on it, really, was the idea. I could do a flat trellis as well, or as well. like a pergola style. It just seemed to take up a little bit more room depth-wise, and I don't have a ton of room over there. That halo was the lowest profile. Yeah.
making something not sure I understand what is meant by double gate uh, on the right side of the house. What do you mean by is it two? It's just swinging a, gates. Yeah, it's just a wider gate so I can I could get something utilitarian okay. back there if I needed to. The septic's back there. Yeah. Um, so just to make it a wider access point. Right, so you've got the gate yeah, and but so two swinging elements. Yeah, and I just want it to be hidden, sort of, because there's no path or anything over there. So I thought it would look best just to have it look like fencing, um, which I think just keeping the double gate at full lattice fence height would make it the most hidden. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I'm I'm just struggling with a little bit is just this halo. That's the only thing I'm. That's the only thing I'm. No, I, you're not liking it. No, it's it's <laughs> I'm just it's not that I don't, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I'm trying to um, trying to imagine something that's very simplistic on the right, and then something that's a little bit more um, you know, it, it's that's why I asked you if you're going to picking up some of the features in the house. Yeah. You know, with, with that, so I'm just wondering if. If maybe something simple on the left would would work well too. Yeah. Um, that's not, you know, just. I think once you have something growing up there, it would probably take it on a different. Yeah. Different look to it, but like when it goes up, I think it's gonna. It, it might just stick out a little bit. Yeah. No, I hear you. I think the intent was just to grow, to grow something green on it, but. Um, you want more symmetry. <coughs> you know, I was just trying to, you know. Pick up, pick up the features on the right with, with the left hand side a little yeah. bit, and just having something simple and just um. So know. just like a simple scallop gate instead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, without the halo. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, I think that would. I don't know how I just feel, but that's. So no, no topper necessarily. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Bless you. Because yeah. I think the pergola topper gets a little heavy, feeling. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it just um, you got a very uh, very simple house, and I think you just want to keep everything. Yeah. No, that is the idea. The appropriate. Clean. And, yeah. yeah. It would eliminate growing stuff on it, but. <laughs> yeah. I could I can deal with that though. I can't help but say this. Um, uh, fences are an interesting commodity in current age. You know, um, I think there's a huge preference for fences that um, uh, uh, and I don't think of Hingham as a town of fences. But what sways me to your fence, Sarah, is that there's an existing fence there so that completing it seems to be redemptive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it's taken me five years to do it I've, because I've been hesitant. But now I sort of need it. <laughs> yeah. I have a dog, and yeah, it just would be helpful at this point. And I think make my yard look a little bit more consistent. Well, fences were meant for animals. Yeah. So um, that's another um, redemptive feature, rather than just for decoration and so forth. Yeah. It's definitely utilitarian. I understand that. As well, it lessens the impact of the fencing to have it commence towards the rear of the house rather than be all the way out towards the front of the yeah. house. Yeah. It's helpful. Yeah. 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 I think the style that's been picked is, is very simple, and the fact that it gets to age naturally would be very appropriate, too. OK. So um, how do you uh, feel about Hans's suggestion in terms of incorporating that into uh, sure. a certificate? Sure, yeah. I have no problem with that, yeah. And what was the final outcome of the suggestion? Yeah, what, so what, what are you thinking? Just a scallop, no topper, yeah. but a little bit of a shape to it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I can you know, move that one out. It could be, 
a semicircle down. It could be semicircle. Yeah. So, whatever. so on our house, we have a little semicircle above, you know. But okay. it's But this is fine, too, you know. Okay. It's still very simple. Okay. And, it, you know, it gives you a chance to kind of see in a little bit. So yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. And that might just buy you making the motion. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other uh, any other comments? You guys good? Okay. All right. Um, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 30 Pleasant Street to uh, construct a fence um, as indicated in drawing on page two of our application. Um, the, uh, the back and the sides of the uh, fencing uh, to match uh, what is existing, um, which would be six foot um, uh, height fence in total, five foot board with one foot lattice on the top. Um, Sarah, I hope I'm getting all this right. Yeah. yeah okay. Yep. And then on the front, um, to tie in on the left side, there will be a, um, a lattice fence with a, um, a single a single gate on the left, or is that is that the double? The, the picture is a double. Okay, double gate. On the left, well, yeah, on the left, that it w is a 36 inch. Okay. It was that, but if we're saying okay. maybe to adapt that, it might be a little different. Okay, so um, if you want to have um, if you want to have a single um, single gate opening or a double I think either one of those would okay. work so I'm going to leave that up to your discretion I think okay. that's okay with the Commission so um, um, owner to um, owner has a choice of a single or a double gate with a um, a curve um, a curve pointing um, upward um, Openings to be either double or a single gate. Um, lattice to be um, also uh, of six foot height on the uh, on the right hand side. Um, only changes to the application and the and the pictures would be to exclude um, any halos um, on the um, on the top of the uh, the gate openings. Um, all hardware to be um, to be black. I'm assuming um, yeah. like that's in the uh, in Is the that pictures. Standard? Yep. Okay. Yep. And a uh, fence to be um, just to be natural and unpainted, correct? Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Great, Thanks Sarah. for coming in. Are you, are you building that fence? No. <laughs> I, live, I live across the street. Okay. <laughs> She's a good friend. Okay. So what was going on there? Oh, nice. Uh, shall we wait five or shall we go forward? You know, Mike, these are all screwed up, these clocks. So mine is, mine says 730. All right, see, 727, I think we're good. Thank you, okay. Mike. So, Jean, Mr. Allen, 137 South Street? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. I apologize, I was not able to attend the last session that you all had together. I had a work conflict, so I asked my attorney to represent me. Michael Nessie was here. Yeah. And he filled me in on the meeting that transpired, and um, he informed me that the basement windows had been approved because they weren't they were below grade, and he said that the windows on the back of the building were approved because they uh, were not visible from the street. And he said the two windows that were installed on the front of the house would need to be replaced as well as the windows I've already purchased on the side of the building would all need to be replaced as well. So I did meet with my contractor and he said that he would buy back all the windows. So that's a good thing. That's Excellent. good. That's really good. Yeah. So that was good news. Yeah. And um, 
he gave me a brochure that I made a copy of to give you and um, he said that that particular as a window was a solid wood window made by Harvey do you have that yes I do and that um, that. particular window that he gave me he said has been approved by the uh, city of Boston as a historic yeah, replacement window and also by uh, the city of Quincy as a historic replacement window as well so that was his recommendation for a, a replacement solid wood window and I have uh, two items before you tonight the window as well as the uh, front walkway that we can talk mm -hmm. about after this. Hmm. We'll probably do the windows and the walkway separately. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. So the, the, the Marvin, what's, oh, excuse me, the Marvin comp on this is, is what? Is, is this like an, uh, is this like a, uh, the ultimate kind of? I'm not, I'm not familiar with the with the majesty. This is a remodel style or is this new construction? It's for a replacement. I'm not sure of the, the difference. Okay. This is the uh, brochure if you'd like to see. Oh, give it to him. Oh, that would be Mike. great. Yeah, so some of the others can see. So I, I think I thought in the in the previous meeting when we were speaking um, with Mr. Nessie, we made the recommendation of um, rebuilding the existing windows of of uh, pursuing pursuing. A, I, I thought that was discussed. Okay. Yeah. So this is you're coming back to us and saying. Okay, I I didn't get that message. Oh, okay. No. Maybe I would decision. like to replace the windows. The windows are in horrible condition. When I purchased the building yep. um, six or seven years ago, I took all the windows out of the building, reglazed them all myself, and rehung all the sash and put in new sash cords. The windows are in bad condition, and they, you know, they leak pretty badly with airflow, and uh, they don't function very well. They don't. The sashes don't lock top and bottom, and there's there's a number of problems with all the existing windows. Madam Chair, if I could just so I don't know if you've pursued a um, anyone that's you know specializes in restoration of windows, but mm -hmm. you know um, that might be the next step. Um, and then if that's not feasible um, because the windows are beyond repair, um, or if there's a you know, if you want to bring up some type of cost issue, um, that's something that, you know, in the past we have we have considered, um, you know, in certain instances. But you may want to just head down that road first, and then if if that's not an option, a viable option, then we can explore this. Um, I think you know Ben and Mike, you guys had a chance to 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 take a look at those windows there and thought that there might be something we could do, right? Yes. Um, I know you already have, and that's you know it's unfortunate you're going to go back and it sounds like do some do some more work on them again, but um, maybe that's an option, and maybe it's a maybe it's a more economical option than than I'm, I'm not sure what the pricing is on this, but something worth exploring. Um, why don't can I just read the minutes from the last hearing? Yeah, please. Okay. Let's see. Um, the application was to replace 16 windows. Uh, let's see. You were represented by attorney Michael Nessie. Mr. Nessie explained that Mr. Allen hired a contractor to replace the windows in the home and that the contractor did not apply for a building permit. The contractor had already begun work placing several windows when the building commissioner issued a stop work order. Commissioner uh, Vonderluf stated that he hopes the owner, homeowner can get restitution as it seems to be the fault of the contractor. Commissioner Collard clarified the number of windows purchased and installed. Um, Mr. Nessie stated that 16 windows were purchased and five have been installed. 
Commissioner Aborn noted the policy of replacing in kind and also hopes the homeowner can get reimbursed. Commissioner Burnham asked about the two original wood windows that were replaced. Mr. Nussie stated that he believes those two windows were thrown away. Um, the administrator, me, stated that if the owner chooses to repair the windows, he can do so without a hearing. Commissioner Tay stated that repairing and restoring would be the most desirable option, but if they cannot be repaired, then the homeowner should come back with a request to replace with wood windows. And it was agreed that I could give administrative approval for new basement windows. So essentially, the, um, the motion to replace the 16 windows was denied. And so that's, um, so I don't, Mr. Nessie, uh, we talked to him about repairing. And so I guess we need to talk about the condition of, of your windows and what to do about the five that have already been replaced. How many were on the front, two? Two. So it sounds like those two cannot be repaired because they're gone. So we'll have to find a substitution for replacement in that scenario, whether it's that window or not. Um, but I think understanding the condition of the remainder of the windows, which appear, yes, they're in rough shape, but I think they're, they seem to be able to be repaired. I think taking another look at that, um, I think would be good, good to do. Um, you know, I'm not, that window there is also a clad window. It's not a wood, I mean, it wood interior, but it's clad on the exterior, which I think is different um, than the full wood window that would typically replace in kind. Uh, in that scenario. Mm -hmm. So let me just clarify, you've been and you Mike have been out to look at the windows. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I um, uh, think that um, there's the possibility for repair based mm -hmm. on your assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And which it sounds like maybe Mr. Nessie didn't convey to you the denial of the replacement, except perhaps for the two, um, but that the next course of action was to get a determination about the possibility of repair from somebody who does repair. Yeah, that's that's how I understood it. So I, I guess I wasn't that clear on what the uh, outcome of that last meeting. Uh -huh. Sure. So um, I, I would like to pursue replacing the windows if possible. Um, you know, living living with those windows are the 16 on that side of the home. You know, living with those windows are, even if they are trimmed slightly to so that the mullions line up so that the sash can be locked, they still feel the the wind when the wind blows goes right through those windows. So, so. as as part of a repair or a refurbishing, the the weather stripping is is replaced and the sash cords are, are done as well. And it's your option if you didn't want a sash cord, if you wanted a sash chain, um, but they use copper weather stripping to help cut down on, on all of that. And you can, you can put a storm window on it. And they have, um, if you don't go with the triple track option, which I believe is what on the, is on the house now, if you want to do something new, they have a more diminutive, really nice, um, there's some manufacturers that make a nice storm window that don't project off the house that sit within, within the trim, um, which would off, also offer you some protection. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, Mr. Allen, we're pre preservationists first. Um, I mean, that's why this commission is here. So it's, it's very, it'd be difficult for us to, after having seen it, um, and come to the conclusion that they could be refurbished, it's difficult for us to then approve something like these majesties which would be a remodel style. So you are essentially taking all the working components of the window out, including the antique glass. All of that goes away, and you're putting in something new. And what is here is actually a, uh, a simulated divided light. So you're going to be changing the look of the house uh, dramatically. We were, 
I would strongly suggest that you get a preservation, someone that can, that can repair these windows for you. Get them out there and get their opinion first. Um, and then we can, we can discuss further. If I can just add, um, Ben, Madam Chair, um, I think it's also important to match what you have in the front that's, that's already been popped out. So um, you may want to explore taking some windows that are original from another part of the house and then moving those in the front, potentially. Um, it's, you know, if the, the muttons match, the trim matches, the you know, glass matches, um, you know, because we need to do something about the front. And then maybe, um, you know, you're going to have to get some replacement windows for what was thrown out. I mean, that's, we're going to have to deal with that. So, um, you know, let's, let's find something appropriate for maybe we can do that tonight for the ones that are going Well, you can, you can purchase just a sash. So everything would stay the way it is now. It's not a remodel style window. It's just the sash goes back in with sash weights. So and with, with the exact same proportions and detail of the, of the windows that were there once before. Now, it wouldn't be antique glass, but that would be the only difference. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the replacement model the window is not an option, you're saying, for that? Not at this time no. until you've um, had the repair assessment. So, um, do, Except for the two. Do you, does your panel have any contractors that are capable of doing that? Um, our administrator can give you a list. Oh, yeah. Andrea can give you a list, yeah. Okay. But if, if you wanted to discuss those existing windows that were... Uh... The ones that were replaced in the front? Right. I mean, I mean for me, for me you're, you're the, who, whoever you have come out there to take a closer look at the existing windows, um, I do think they could provide as well a sash that will fit in those existing openings and they will look like the original. And as, as Hans pointed out, you may have a set in uh, a window there now that fits, but it's not visible from a public, public way. So those could be moved to the front. Especially in the rear. Mm -hmm. and, is there and, uh, and refurbished in the process. And also refurbished, yep. yes, right. So you would get- Is the there a storm strip. window that has a um, insulated value of a replacement window? I'm not aware of, I'm not aware of one, but yeah. they, they may exist, yeah. Is there, uh, do I need to come back to the panel um, for a storm window improvement or can that be directly with Andrea? Apparently no, no, not necessary. So storm windows would be a short term solution for mm -hmm. the approaching winter? And then, uh, that sounds okay then. I'll just pursue getting a contractor. Is that, is that clear in terms of um, both the two windows that need refurbishment as well as the yep. others? Finding an original re type replacement sash to put in there. Yeah. Could somebody just please reiterate for Mr. Allen um, the, the appropriate type of window sash that he can get to replace what's what was replaced with the um, unapproved window. So speaking strictly about those vinyl remodels that have been put in and yes. are visible from a public way. So um, the board would like to see those removed. These are the ones visible from a public way. Those yep. removed. Um, and then a sash, this is the operating portion, put back in and either something as Hans mentioned already in the house that's not visible from a public way that can go and, and replace those vinyl those vinyl windows or you can purchase a sash they will make you a sash that will fit in that opening that will take a, uh, the weights the sash weights um, and what would be a third option that the person that you get out to take a look at the existing windows about refurbishing them they may have some inventory Many of these, many of these um, professionals keep older windows in stock, if you will. Yeah. And they may have something available. Uh, okay. It would be a single pane window. Single pane window, wood, all wood, all not wood. clad. Right. Single pane window, all wood. 
Yeah, that's pretty clear. And a storm. Yeah. Yeah, the storm is your option. Okay. Hey, just as an aside, hopefully you can work something out with your contractor to put those in initially for the labor piece of it. I know he's really helped you out with the, uh, the cost of buying back the uh, the other windows, but maybe you can work something out with him too on the on the swapping out of those windows because that was his work. Right. You know. Yeah, he seems pretty uh, Good. open to that. Good. Anything else? It would help you uh, for us to discuss tonight about your about this the window project. Um, well, the the sash for the um, those front windows. There are some windows further towards the back of the house on the side, though, that are still visible. I could bring those forward that potentially could match. I haven't measured them to see if they would. I don't know if that would be an option, and then replace the ones further towards the back of the house with the so replaced So if those are visible windows. from a public way, I would not recommend doing that because you're yeah. just robbing Peter to pay Paul. Um, no, these would, the windows that you would, you would choose would have to be on a portion of the house that is not visible from a public way. There's, there's no point in, in oh, <coughs> moving those windows. Right, yeah. okay. right. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Um, move on to the next. Uh, the second item. Item, your walkway. The second okay. item is a walkway. There's a, uh, do you have photos of that? Yes. There's an existing um, concrete walkway in the front of the home, partially uh, tarred with a concrete broken walkway, and I like to replace that with a brick walkway with the uh, Boston City pavers with a running bond. And I'd like to border that with a uh, granite. Border horizontally, uh, not vertically, right? Just in the front of the uh, um, brick. The the whole edge. Oh, oh this one um, D. I see. Okay. But, but not a not an apron. In one of the pictures, no. lower left. Okay. I didn't plan on an apron, but um, just. So just granite pavers. Yeah. Yeah. And this. That's a cobblestone. I'm sorry. Those yes, look like a cobblestone. cobblestone. Uh, yeah. And this would go all the way to the sidewalk. Correct. Yep. That'll be a nice improvement. Other comments? Okay, are we ready for a motion? I'll make Mike? a motion. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 137 South Street to replace an existing concrete and asphalt walkway with a new uh, Boston City Hall paver brick walkway uh, with a running bond pattern uh, and granite cobblestone edging. Uh, sidewalk to run to abut to the um, uh, city, the town sidewalk, and uh, no concrete apron um, as it meets the town sidewalk. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Good. Thanks for coming in again. Thank okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Shall we wait the five, Andrea? Yeah. Pardon? Shall we wait the five? Uh, yeah, we can. Clock is still slow. What time is it? I got uh, three minutes early. Seven forty-seven. Can we say? What? Yeah, really. Okay. Yeah.
well, for two minutes, let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, next up is 361 Main Street, uh, Wendy and Robert Kirk, um, for a continuation of uh, your application. Our site visit on Saturday and discussion with Jonathan was helpful. Um, and um, um, I, th I don't know if people have had the opportunity to look at the PDF file on these plans that Andrea distributed through the email yesterday. but. So we may um, we may have some pauses as we uh, no problem. as we look. Um, Thank you. Sure. So um, do you yeah. want to kick off? Yeah. So basically, uh, you know, uh, from the comments from last time, uh, we made some changes to the design. Uh, and going down the list, uh, I removed uh, the left side addition, which was coming out two-story addition, so we, we got rid of that to simplify uh, the front-facing elevation and the, uh, the southeast-facing uh, facing elevation, as, uh, along with reducing the complexity along the southeast elevation. Uh, we raised that roof line uh, as uh, requested, um, and in doing so, I kept a porch up in front to alleviate the massing issue that I had during that meeting with doing that. I also... <coughs> Reduce the height of the garage roof, uh, change the pitch to match the existing, and then created the design to allow for the ADU to be hidden behind both the garage and the mudroom and the, uh, uh, the, the rear extension. And basically we re re reduced the overall square footage of the house. And those are the basic changes from the comments from last time. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you're moving, you're moving the garage? Yes. Oh, yeah, that was one other item. Relocating the barn. Relocating it to the, somewhere on the site and where we'd like to put it, or at least my option is the sort of to the left side to get away from the massing of the main body of the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything you want to say? Uh, no, just I'm curious to hear what some of the discussion was at the site visit. Um, and, you know, I think we're, we're pleased with the plans as they've been revised. We feel like we've, you know, Jonathan's taken into consideration a lot of the comments that were made. Um, so really curious to hear your thoughts about the site visit and then the revisions. Um, any members of the audience want to speak at this point in time? Okay, let me, um, let me um, s start off um, from perhaps a bit of a uh, philosophical perspective about um, a project of this scale in a um, historic district. Um, I think that um, the setting of this house, this is a, um, to my way of looking at it, um, quite a pivotal house uh, in the sense of sitting up on a knoll. It's, you know, it has a significant property um, around it. Um, and that the setting becomes important. So that um, I was um, persuaded to look in the uh, Historic District's handbook um, to look at a, um, a house in a setting of a historic district, not just a set, not a house as a set of architectural details that we comment on. And um, um, 
in the introduction, I don't know if you have a copy of the uh, handbook, but in the introduction to the district's handbook, um, Alec McMillan and um, Radford Spout, Sprout wrote um, that um, the designation of a district depends upon the relationship of architectural resources both to each other and to their setting. So it's, it's a house in a dynamic relationship with the setting of the streetscape and the setting next to um, other properties, which I think is important in this house, given what you want to do to it, depending on how it's done, you know, the visual, the visual focus um, needs to be well accounted for, shall we say, in terms of what additions are, um, are uh, added. And, um, um, you know, I also think in a district, um, it's not just about, okay, an old house has stood the test of time, but these antique houses, uh, as is my preferential terminology for them, tells us about how people lived. And, you know, they have all been evolved into additions, but, but the key here, I think, is to keep a respect for the existing house, the lines of the existing house, the form, and so forth. And, you know, what I think um, we're facing here um, is, you know, you have a very simple Georgian design, which, you know, is known for symmetry, proportion, clean lines, and you're proposing some elaborate additions, even though um, they've been um, simplified since, um, since the last hearing. Um, and, you know, even with a ADU, um, in the ADU um, description, um, there's a clause saying the ADU has to be in keeping with the existing house, you know, so that there um, uh, is um, an important consideration both to adding a dwelling as well as keeping it within the um, existing house. Um, I, um, um, I can stop here and let, I have other things to say, but maybe it would be um, pertinent to let other commission members um, um, start from here. in terms of comments. I can, I can go next. Okay, um, Jonathan, thank you. I think, I, think these, um, I think these are, this is well thought out. This is thoughtful design. I would, I would say that um, the understated trim detail really is a good nod to the existing structure. You've tipped the hat. Um, I, think, I think this is an improvement over nothing I, I don't mean any, to say anything bad about the existing additions, but this is an improvement to those existing additions. Um, I mean, what I, would, what I would like to see is, I think this is probably coming later, but uh, more detail in terms of materials being used yep. so that we could have a better understanding of the windows and, yeah. and, the, and the trim detail. And you're correct. That will be coming later. We just want to get Proportions. Our, our hands around the, the actual Right, design. okay. Um, I don't. I think this is a great improvement from what you presented first, and I appreciate I appreciate that hard work. Thank you. I'm done. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I also appreciate the simplification of this one over the last one. I think the removal of the addition onto the left of the main house helps preserve some of the existing character of the existing house, which I think uh, simplifies. I think the two-story addition to the rear, I think, is an, an improvement over the existing two-story addition. And it's not quite an in-kind replacement because it is a little bit bigger, but it's not, um, it's not too far off from what's there. And then I look at sort of what's left, which is sort of the ADU, which for the most part is tucked behind the intent there is it shouldn't be seen from the right. public way the connector and then you've got the garage so um, you know I think um, it's it's come a long way and I think it's um, certainly headed in the right direction okay 
the relocation of the barn is going to be important because I think as we walked through there, it was, it's clearly been there for a while. Um, you can see a lot of the timbers inside. So I think um, saving that and relocating it, I think, is going to be important um, for this application. Okay, um, I can say a few things. Um, so, uh, did quite a bit of work on this over the last, um, <laughs> when were we out, last weekend? Yeah, Saturday, weekend? just yeah. a few days ago. In the rain, and gosh, yeah. it seems like a month ago. <laughs> um, in the rainstorm. So, um, we're, we're a design review board. You know, we're not supposed to, our charge is not, um, designing things for you we're supposed to have you come to us but I thought we were a little bit of a um, it's getting a little confrontational it was kind of getting a little bit kind of I felt like we were kind of button heads a little bit last meeting so what I did was I just drew a sketch out of um, of uh, this plot plan here and maybe with a with a couple suggestions um, that you may want to think about in terms of the placement of the structures and the buildings so for for me um i would like to i would just like to protect and preserve the integrity of the the main house as much as possible mm -hmm. because i think you've got a you know a real showpiece here uh, it's it's a gem of a house it sits on top of a hilltop i had never walked back behind your your property before i mean there's it's just awesome yeah thank you um it's just uh, it's very unique um it's to have that much property and to have it so private back you know, you know in the center of town is, is a rarity. So I think um, you know the suggestions that I would make would be um, how can you how can you build this, protect the integrity of the main house and just get all the benefits of the rear of the property. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time getting your folks in so you know it's usable for them. And it's uh, it's uh, it's something that works for everyone. It's something that works for the commission from a preservation standpoint. Something that works for you, um, and you know it's just getting the full benefits of your property. So um, I know we've been kind of having a little bit of a struggle with this uh, with this barn and and uh, and the driveway and the attached garage. But what I was thinking about um, is that you know if you could relocate this barn to the side somehow. Um, add a little bit of, um, of you know, make the make the driveway a little bit more interesting um, up to the property, so it's not like a an airplane runway kind of running up to the house. Um, so put a little bit of a curve there um, in that. Um, and what I'm trying to do is, you know, on the second page here, I just I just looked at, I just went down and looked at your street, and you know, everybody's got a separate, you know, a separate garage all the way down, and. Um, and if you look at the uh, the numbers that I scribbled down, it's kind of the square footage numbers of each of the uh, yep. each of the houses. Um, you know what people have. So, you know, I think if you add um, some square footage here, it doesn't. You know, it's it, you, you know you've got some neighbors at 383, 373, 367 up the street that you know it doesn't. It's not inconsistent with those types of um, yep. you know footprints and square footages. So I think you've got room to add here. Um, and I think picking up on some of the comments with the other members, I think that's um, you know that's very appropriate. Um, you know, we do have a we do have a question on our on our guidelines of you know uh, you know going over 50 percent in terms of adding square footage. It kind of triggers a you know is this really necessary type of review. Um, so I would just um, I think some of the numbers, Jonathan, you worked through in some of the square footage is you're kind of you're you're around that mark, but it's not. It's, you're not doubling the size right. of it, so um, no, you know I think I think adding some some mass in here is, is okay, but what I was trying to do is so it's not the footprint of this. If you attach the garage here, you're it, you're almost doubling the size of the footprint of the house right now is, is the way I'm thinking about it. So if you can if you can move it away and give the the house a little bit room to breathe, protect the integrity of it. Um, I think that would go a long way for me in terms of my review and asking, um, you know, going through some of these questions. Um, for instance, in some of our re review criteria on the site, um, you know, we asked, does a new building reflect the site factors that are common on the street in terms of setbacks, orientations of the street, 
uh, spacing, distance from adjacent buildings, and visibility from a public way. And we also ask, is the uh, proposed new addition placed so that it will minimize the visual impact of the historic structure? So I would just refer you back in terms of the site. You know, look at the, look at the immediate streetscape, look at the neighborhood, look at all these houses right here that, that you want to, um, you, you want to pick on a, a lot of the elements that they have in terms of how they're designed, how they're structured relative to the street, how the site looks how the garage is, the spacing from the house. So it's, um, you know, you're, you're picking up on a lot of those elements. So I would just say if, if, you could, if you could get there and keep with that, that how that streetscape looks, I think that would, that would match up very well. Um, the, um, you know, the other thing I would point to in terms of our review is that we go through and we, we look at you know, character, and we ask the question, you know, new construction to be designed so that the overall character of the site, site topography, character defining site features, features, trees, and historically significant district vistas and views are retained. And then we ask the question, will the new construction affect the overall character of the historic streetscape in this location with, res res with respect to for instance, the character defining site fi features. So it's all kind of getting back to that streetscape question. You know, does this, you know, does this mesh well with the character of the streetscape of your, you know, immediate homes? So that's how I was kind of coming up with that, that design and that just trying to help you and Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, let me, put, let you, me, put let me you in a direction that might make sense for everyone. Let me comment on that. So that sketch, Basically what, so the intent of the, the, the change design is tried to hide the massing, you know, by turning it in, in the pieces to the back are not going to be viewed from the public way. What you're doing is removing that and making the extension seem even larger, which I think is not what you want to go. So that's, I disagree with. Yeah, I was just trying to make use of the um, the existing garage and barn, which I think is um, I, I don't know the age of it. Single bay. It's really not that usable. Yeah, you for can only get cars. one car in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's about 25 foot wide, and I just took a ruler and, and measured kind of versus your drawing. Is that about right? I'd, I'd, I'd have to go out and measure it, but I would doubt that the main part of that garage is 25. It looks to be about 20 to 22, maybe at maximum. Uh, but I can verify that. For Actually, measured it this evening. The door is 16 feet. Yeah. With it's two feet on each side, so two, it's 20. 20 feet. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, the height of the garage door, because it's an, it's not the original, but it's a really heavy, like really heavy, kind of retro door. Um, okay. It's not tall enough to get our vehicles in. With that aside, I think that barn wasn't originally a garage. Obviously, the age of it is it was something else. So, the mm -hmm. intent of taking that and making it into a garage, I don't know if that's truly what the that doesn't strike me as a historic way of doing something so and just uh, sorry one more note if we were to do this so the way it's sketched here is the way it sits on the property right now mm -hmm. if we were to turn it 90 degrees to get that driveway over to the side yep. you'd have that side part kicking out towards the street um, yeah the, so in other words the driveway would have to go straight in from the street with the, the with the orientation of yeah you have to, that's you'd have to change is. the location of the door in that design, which could be done, I imagine. But I don't it, know. I, I'm not sure if the height of the uh, the eaves would allow. I that don't to think happen, it actually. would. It's just a way to you know preserve the I building, get it. get no, use out of it. Um, uh, I just you know reconfigure it. Um, to me, the garage portion or the barn portion is secondary. I I just feel if you if you separate that that garage from it, the the extension to the rear, it, it, it goes beyond what I was trying to do, you know, and, and that's, I think, not the correct way to do it. Yeah. And we do like the idea of, of relocating the barn actually to that side of the property because it kind of helps to balance the whole, the, you know, the whole property and you'd still be able to see it from the street, which is great um, to kind of preserve part of its history. Yeah, and I just had a, you know, 
to, to take advantage of your privacy in your backyard. I just had a fence there connecting the two and maybe a walkway, but, you know, in back of it. Yeah, and we so, might do that, you know, with these plans as well. Okay. Because right now there's those big pine trees, which would probably end up coming down. But, yeah. I mean, it's so nice to have that. It really does. People go back there and they're like, I can't believe yeah. that this is back here because you don't know, you can't tell from the street. But So, and, and it's just... Um, you know, these plans have come a long way. It's just that um, I, I feel that when you when you position the garage up against the side of it, it, it um, this just becomes more of a it becomes more of a contemporary look with kind of a, in a new neighborhood and a cul-de-sac. You know, it's not this is not um, I'm just trying I'm trying to get you back to this is an 1880 Georgian colonial. Um, and just kind of looking like the rest of the homes on the streetscape and how they're positioned relative to the street, how the other structures are on the street. But this this gets away from that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I, you know, um, I had sent Andrea some pictures of homes in the historic, in our historic district that have garages and, you know, a house like 392 Main Street, the one that just redid the stone wall in front, you know, they, when Doug Carroll bought that, he made it. A lot larger than the two family that it was he added the garage to the off to the side similar to this one I think they have a similar property in terms of you know the house being set on one side and a lot of open space so there's a lot of visibility from the street um, so you know we were kind of going based off of some examples that we had seen the other one was 24 Pleasant Street, which did something very similar to us. They repurposed their old barn, moved the driveway to the other side, redid the back part, and then put the garage um, on the other side with the dormers in the front just recently, too. So we were kind of trying to mirror some of those things that had, yeah. you know, had been passed. Um, and, uh, just, uh, and part of what's a little bit deceiving from that, uh, that P2 drawing, the garage is set farther back. So, you know, the, the idea that you have the colonial box, small Lincoln garage. It's, you know, maybe it's worth doing a three-dimensional drawing of this um, because it's not quite there. You know, that you have the main colonial, you have the extension of the back, and then you have it. It's, it's positioned much farther back. So I think, you know, with the comment that it's more of the, you know, more contemporary, you know, colonial box, it's, it's, it's deceiving on that drawing. It's, it's, it's more three-dimensional. You know, in that sense, a model might help to yeah. um, to um, help elaborate uh, elaborate that. But um, I'm sorry, Hans, were you finished? Uh? No, I, I, I I'm passing to some other folks like you. I just want to spoke too much. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you know, I um, concur that the uh, second set of plans are really. Uh, um, an improvement in terms of the regard for the existing house, which, um, uh, but I will say that um, I think if the different shapes and so forth could be made even more compatible with a Georgian style, I think it would be all to the good because I think even still, although much less so than on the first round of plans, the additions are intrusive to the existing house um, in terms of looking at it. And you know, again, maybe a model would um, clarify that even, um, even further. But um, um, that- so When you say intrusive, just, I'm just curious, this is basically to help me. Yeah. Um, what elements like is it the size of the garage you, so a Georgian colonial has a nice size to it you know there's a good yeah. presence are you do you feel like the garage needs to be taller or bigger or like you know what and I do aside from the fact that you don't like garages it's what you know more about you know the, the, the scale of things well I think a, a garage in a proper place is terrific if it's you know. attached or big detail yeah I mean I'm um, I can't say that I in any way favor the garage being attached, and I know it's a um, uh, a central issue for you, but I um, I think it really uh, creates a problem for um, the house. But the different um, slopes on uh, some of the different 
um, elements. Well, if you're looking at the back, so all the slopes are all the same in the front. Anything viewed from the street, the slopes are all, all, yeah. all the same. It's that back area. Now, the reason why those and the slopes side. are different. Uh, which side? Well, let me see. I, uh, um, oh, okay, that one, but all A3. The, yeah, all, oh, A3. Okay. Which slope there? Well, those all should match. I may, maybe I misspoke about slope, but in terms of the top drawing, you know, that's awfully busy. I'm sorry, I don't have the technical term for it, but it's busy um, I, I in gotta a sense. Get, I, and I, gotta, I need a little bit more clarification as far as busy. I mean, we've got windows, shutters, and a porch. Well, and then you have, um, maybe, are we on the same page? A3? Yeah. And, and you're talking about the porch in the center here? Yeah. I mean, they both, what, what you're looking at, those two drawings, is they're the same drawing without the bottom one. But without, just the the, without, um, without the garage on one. Just so you can see beyond, because it covers a little bit of it. Right. I, I'm just trying to get an understanding. When you no, I know. say busy, so last time it was busy, and I understood that maybe the dormers were a little bit too much detail, so I eliminated those. That's as simple mm -hmm. as I can make it other than elim eliminating the porch, which I think is a benefit to that elevation. Right now, you get a two-story mass, and I think you want to break that up. This there. is the new porch, right? Yes, yeah, that would be all new. everything to the back. Um, was there consideration to keeping the old porch? There is no. So old porch. the porch, the the four-season porch that's there now sits on a slab, which creates a problem. Um, it has a flat rolled roof that's got water. We got water damage. I mean, it's just that whole. As I think some of you guys commented, that that back part of the house is really not in good shape um, structurally. We have a lot of water damage and a lot of rot and, you know, it's the foundations are different. There's a crawl space, there's a slab. So it's really, um, it makes it difficult mm -hmm. to work with. But is that what you're considering a porch? I, uh, yeah, is that the, because that's not a porch, that's a, that's a real room. Yeah. Oh, it, it, with the windows? Yeah. It's a real, it is a real room. It's, really? Yeah, yeah, it's part of the house. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. It's a heated space. Yes. So I guess, you know, um, I don't know that right now I can get particularly specific. And I only ask in detail. No. for direction. No, yes. I appreciate it. Um, um, but I, term, I think in terms of anything that can be as simple as possible for the existing house um, and for the property, you know, the, um, I mean, you look at that property from the street and, um, um, it's important that the elements, I think, line up so that there aren't the distractions of things that are less important than the design of the house. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, one of the reasons why the other design was the way it was where we had the left portion coming out is we needed a certain size for the rear addition to work. Because of the set, setback on the right side of the house, it slid everything yeah. to the left. So now it's overlapping. But we have seen some examples in town that they did very similar additions to this. So we felt it might be appropriate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sure. Other comments? Um, I'll go. Um, thank you so much for having us out on Saturday. Thank you. Uh, much appreciated. I was not part of the, uh, the, the previous meeting, but I was there on Saturday and I did go back and, and look at it. <clears throat> I will say that I, um, I do appreciate um, the iteration from where it was originally to where it is now, um, and the fact that you're looking to relocate the existing barn. Um, I still have a little bit of a problem when I look at the overall mass. Um, top side, but then when I look at it from the side, it's been reduced dramatically. Um, so again, I think a model would be a great help. Because um, my first take when I looked at the front page would be I still have an issue with the mass. But then when I went over to the side, A3, yeah. it's much more appropriate, I feel, in, in terms of scale and size. Um, so, 
I'm not that opposed to the uh, to, to the thing in in total. However, if possible, I would love to see the the garage detached and not attached to the house. I know that there have been um, attached garages in other parts of town, um, but some of these have really sort of size constraints in terms of their properties. So you can't put a garage 25 feet back uh, as it relates to the house because there is no 25 feet set back in the yard from where they have it. Um, but however, you actually have it, and I do like what Hans came up with, even though that might not be the right garage, but if you could put that off to the side. Um, and then um, I have two minor things, but those are more sort of cosmetics. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of cupolas, but <laughs> yeah. that's an, that's an you easy You can get rid of that. Thing. That's not a problem. That's on this if we get to that. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, secondly, um, the opening of the driveway. Um, if we get to that as well, make that uh, more of a, a 10 or a 12 foot opening of yep. a driveway and then you could have sort of a wider driveway later on if you wanted yeah, yeah. to put a car up there or do a, yeah. a U-turn or something. Mm -hmm. like that. In my defense on that one, I just try to get this thing yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think we kind of see it coming in from an angle yeah. and kind of coming up. Um, but but, just but I do, I mean, 3A, when I looked at it, I was like, very pleasantly surprised. So Thomas, the, the, if um, if the garage doors were on a different elevation, and the design of the the shape that is the garage didn't look like a garage to the public view, is that something worth considering? Are you suggesting rotating at ninety degrees so you come ninety eight hundred and eighty? Uh, you know, whatever works. But keeping it attached. But keeping it attached. So you could potentially be looking at eaves rather than a gate. Well, the roof line is. Arbitrary. Right. I mean, we can change the roof line no matter what. It's more about looking at something that is saying, I'm a garage. Right. You know, if I take the doors and I locate them some, you know, to the back, is that more preferable? And that's what I'm, all I'm looking for. What is more preferable? I think naturally, everybody knows it's a garage, even though the doors are in the back. Yeah. So well, it depends on the shape. I mean, you're not, you're not going to always know it's a garage. But yeah, I agree. I think, generally speaking, you're going to think that's some sort of garage. I would probably. My, my first thing would be probably to to take out the glass and make it more of a, a yep. barn looking door yep. uh, possibly rather than having the uh, uh, the glass on, on top um, the glass but, on top like yeah you, right now you have the glass on, on top oh, of the okay. garage doors yeah, right no, I think uh, but that. but to me necessarily moving them to the side I think the the property is so wide as as you're coming down Still Main Street yeah. you would you would see the garage doors probably even more yeah. as you were driving where I think that the way it's actually turned now, you're going to pass it and you're just going to see the side of the garage and not necessarily yeah, right. Your eyes the are whole looking thing. straight ahead yeah. and you wouldn't even see it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is the house is going to sit up high and back. So I'm not necessarily um, no, that worried point. about the entire mass, the way it's designed now. I was much more concerned earlier um, but again my preference would be a, a detached garage if possibly um, and no cupola but, uh, but yeah I think this is this is a, a great step in the right direction Thank you. Yeah. can I just add because I know you weren't at the last meeting um, of one of the big reasons for the attached garage um, is it's in the short and long term a place for my parents to live Yep. My dad's 82. He had a stroke last year. My mom is not very steady on her feet, and it's a huge personal um, request from me to have them in a place that's safe, um, which means not being out in the elements. We actually had a, one of a tree came down last night, impaled one of our cars, which is now being towed away. It hit the garage. We have a hole in our roof of our garage, but I think that can be fixed. Minor. Okay. But <laughs> the insurance adjuster is coming out next week. But anyway, just thinking overall safety. Um, you know, I know there's a house on Middle Street, 45, that recently took their garage down, built a new garage closer to the house, and attached it. And I guess, you know, the question is, they didn't have to attach it, but they did, because everybody wants it for convenience, right? For um, So, but the... The big reason why I'm, we're asking for the attachment is just 
really safety and um, at this point. So just so you just to fill you in. Thank you. Yeah. Have you given any consideration to detaching the garage? We have considered it. The, if I could, if the ADU laws said I could have a detached garage with the ADU behind it, we'd be, those would be on our plans already. But the ADU bylaws say that it has to be attached to the house by a heated mm -hmm. hallway or something. So that's where our restriction comes from. So yes, consider it, but you know, um, really trying to have access from the garage to direct access inside from the garage to the ADU. We talked about, so, you know. I'm sorry, so, so I could be mistaken. So the bylaw does not state that the ADU just has to be getting its power source and heat from the main house no. with running on the same meter? It no. has to be attached? has to be attached okay. by a heated space, yep. Okay. Well, I would uh, actually, I, I, I find my comments are very much in line with Tomas's that I, I think that the amount of massing that is proposed is very reasonable, especially given the, uh, the size of the proper, property being able to handle it. I, I also concur with the, just don't like the cupola. I think it changes a little the character of the building but what really changes the character of it is the the attachment of the garage it it changes the the character of the main house and i find even if i even if i just put my hand over the connection all of a sudden it feels so much more historic uh, that's why and i've got to believe that it, you can like make a safe transition I, I do, I'm sorry. I, I think a model or a 3D will help help you because again, that that drawing, that 2D drawing, is just too flat and in your face, and it's, no. it's just it's simply not quite accurate. You're going to see the main body of the house, you know, 20 feet in front of that garage. Um, so the garage will feel, at least in my opinion, a just detached. You know, obviously not detached, but even the roof lines that connect it are much lower, and that's why there's the low roof lines in the back. Um, you know, I think I would like to show yeah, you. Yeah, per perhaps, perhaps. But I know when I just look at this yeah, drawing, yeah, and yeah. I stick my hand like this, all of a sudden it looks more appropriate to me. Yeah. Uh, but maybe a model would you're help them. That. All the design. Right. Yeah, I mean, no, no. I think. It, I mean, it's. It's. I think you've you've done a lot of wonderful work. Uh, done a lot of wonderful work. Got one more question in terms of the pitch of the garage roof. It yeah, was reduced in height via the pitch. Yeah. Um, what was the pitch before, and what is it now? Matches the existing now. I'd have to. I'd have to look. I think it was a ten, and now it's an, a nine or something. Uh, and I think I made it a ten before because it dealt with uh, another roof coming into it. Um, but uh, I, I can get back to you on that. It's whatever. Now it matches the existing. I can I can guarantee you that. Uh, I don't remember what it was before. Yeah, it seems. I just I just look at the new versus the old, and you know I appreciate the reduction in height, but it, the pitch just seems a little flat. I, honestly, that may have been why I did the other one because I did feel like I felt like it was creating just a, you know, so I, I wanted it to look more like a barn. So I think I made made the other pitch stronger. And that may have been a, a 10 or a 12 pitch. I, I, I got to look back. Yeah. It, it, it's a 12. Is it a 12? The, the, uh, the first drawing was first a 12. 10. But this feels less than a it 10. It is. Yeah, that's like a 9 or a 10. Yeah, yeah that's. So maybe yeah. a 10 is. Yeah, I mean, I was just trying to, to match it, but I, I can definitely raise it. And I, I agree with you. I feel like it needs to be yeah. more steep to, to allow it to feel like a barn. Right. But maybe not as much as you had before. Yeah, correct. Somewhere in between. You can do a, a 10 pitch. Yeah. But I have a feeling. I, I get a look at the existing. I have a feeling that the existing is close to a 10 if it, if it isn't a 9 or a 10. The, um, the main volume gable end, is that, you have an idea on the pitch there? Is that a 10? On the existing house? Oh, yeah, uh, on, the, on the new. Yeah, the new. Uh, on the new back? New uh, original volume of the house. Does that look like a 10 pitch to you? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's either a 9 or a 10. Okay. Like I was saying. Um, it's, I can tell you exactly what it is because I got it measured, so okay. I just don't have it noted here. 
Well, it sounds like any more comments that people would like to make at, at this juncture, um, because it sounds like at this juncture to have a model to better understand if the garage was going to remain attached, what it would look like. Um, because I'm hearing a sentiment with some slight preferential for a detached. Um, and this may be where there is a disjuncture between um, a preservation perspective and a preferential functional perspective. And if we can, if we can reach some um, uh, rapprochement with that that respects preservation, I think it would be all to the good. And I think the model may be the way that um, um, seeing is believing. So um, would that be the next step? Yes, and um, I'll need to ask you to sign an extension mm -hmm. because um, by the next time we meet the expiration date on the application. Here you are. Thank you. Just sign it and date it, yep. please. So do you prefer in fine with me a model or do you want to see a 3D perspective? Um, what's the differential on illumination? 3D perspective looks more realistic, but it's just an image. You know, you, you'll probably take it from the 45 degree angle looking from Main Street. The model, you can, you can look at it. Uh, the cost for these guys probably is similar. <laughs> Not that much. The nice thing about the model is you can kind of hold it yeah. again, yeah. It, whereas you can't do that. With, and, and even maneuver components right. around. Right. And I think what might be helpful too is <laughs> if, make it <laughs> <stick> apart, <laughs> yeah. well, as if you were able to make like the existing, yeah, just yeah. pull the existing yeah. off and do that. put the new one on. It doesn't have to be fancy, but just to get yep. get a sense of the massing. You've made yeah. some nice models in the past. Sure. Joe, <laughs> but I have a question. Would it be possible to? without going crazy trying to make a drawing that's not a flat drawing the way it is now from down here where you're like sort of like looking up at the slope and sort of getting a perspective of how much you're going to see. 3D guy could do that. It's just I don't want to spend no. these guys okay. spend all their money. We then we would prefer the model. one or the other. I think the model. We would prefer the model. Yep. Sorry. I think we're more familiar with the models in the sense of um, Work. Manipulating. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be appreciative. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, do you, do you envision kind of having the whole kind of front um, yard in, you know, kind of just sitting on a platform so you can kind of. Unfortunately, yeah, I mean, uh, as far as the model goes. Yeah, so, I mean, like the, like the plot plans, you kind of see the layout, or were you just going to bring it? I mean, I, what, what are you comfortable with? I, I like just, you know, do a little perimeter around, but it's hard to make a model on a slope, if that's what you're asking. No, I just kind of with the, with the property and... Uh, I mean, I could. It depends on the scale of the model. Usually, yeah. I like to make the model the same size as the drawing, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think it's eighth scale. Okay. Um, so, if I made the property eighth scale, the thing would be as big as your table. Okay. With, with this property, it seems like a certain vista is important yeah. for perspective. You can pull it up. <laughs> All right. So we have a next step. Good. Okay. Well, thank you for um, thank you. hearing out our perspectives. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Should we be prepared at the next meeting to discuss windows and doors and things like that? Yes. Do you have any suggestions? Or are there windows and doors that you guys like? Because we're really happy to All wood. take <laughs> yep, any like Marvin or Anderson or? Yeah. <laughs> no, just, okay. So what, what are the, the preferred manufacturers these days? I mean, uh, Col the Col Colby makes an all wood. Yeah, uh, Marvin, there's the Brasco. Yep. Uh, I'm missing one. But these are all authentic single pane, and you have to do the. Uh, do you guys ever allow uh, simulated divided light or authentic divided light with individual? Uh, simulated <laughs> on uh, what about uh, even facing uh, the public way? Okay. Yes, we've approved that in the past. Just Unless you wanted to do authentic, oh, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a few years, so I didn't know if you guys are any progress on that. Well, thank you for thank you. Um, your efforts. Thank, thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. It's for you. Thanks, Wendy. Great. 
Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Jonathan, you get to stick around. Yeah, I'm so, Chairman Collard will conduct uh, the next hearing on 1040 Main Street and then the subsequent one on um, 34 Main Street. Okay, just before we get started, to confirm the voting members on this will be Justin, myself, Ben, and Hawkins. Uh, and that's 1040. 1040 Main. So, thanks for having us out. Um, again, that was a great site visit. Uh, thanks for letting us in to see the condition of the windows. And the on the property. So, um, you know, I know you made some updates on the design um, since we talked a little bit about it. Um, but can you update us? Yeah. Walk us through those changes. Yep. Mr. Vice um, Chair, can you yep. pull your microphone a little closer to you? There you go. Perfect. Uh, so basically, you know, some of the comments on the original plans was the, um, um, it mainly had to do with the Liberty Road elevation. You know, there are some other comments as well as far as the existing. So uh, what the changes were were to simplify the Liberty Road elevation, uh, to scale down the addition to allow for the existing structure to remain more important. Um, and then also I wanted to lessen the impact of the garage because I know that's an issue. So I took the garage doors and I uh, made them uh, turn to the back of the structure that wouldn't be viewed from Main Street. Um, and then uh, I, uh, to, in order to um, reduce the size, you know, I took off the, uh, the two appendages that came out to the sides, but I still needed some area on the first floor, so only on the first floor level uh, I extended out that, that left side. And some of the comments uh, last time was if I could do something that expanded, it would be uh, uh, in an elevation that would be less seen. So I expanded to the left side, which is, as you guys saw from the site, there's a, there's a fence there. It's harder mm -hmm. to see that elevation. And that's sort of uh, what prompted the changes. Yeah, everything that scaled the whole thing down. And what was the reduction in square footage from the previous application, do you know? About 300 square feet, yeah. Excuse me? About 300? 300. 300. And, and Jonathan, what did you take off in terms of the length of the, um, the uh, oh, building? You know, you asked me that. I think it was about eight feet. Yeah, it could mm -hmm. have been more than that. Um, I, I would say eight to ten feet. I, I'd have to get back here on that one. I think I've got your old drawing. Yeah, do you have the old one? I think I've got your old drawing somewhere. I think this is it. He's got it. I gave it to him. Okay. Um, is there anybody in the audience that'd like to comment on this application? No. Ten feet. So the other one was 56 feet off, but now this one's 46. Um, so the 46 is from where to where? From the back of the existing main structure, the one that's going to exist, to the front of the garage doors. Okay, so 46 and you were at 56? Yep. Okay. And the existing, the existing house is what? Is it about 20, 30? Yeah, it's, it's about, it, I think it's uh, 20, 24 by 30. 30, 30 going back towards the garage, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then there's there's a there's a back porch that's eight feet, and then there's a, an addition to the to the Liberty Road side that's being taken off that's about 16 feet. So in total, the existing would be about 46 feet. So on the plot plan, that's the dashed. Yeah. Okay. That, that piece is coming off. Right. I think you guys have made some uh, nice progress here. Um, it was great to come out and um, you know, we, we've seen a lot of houses. I mean, look, we've seen a lot of houses. This, <laughs> this was a, a unique visit. So, um, you know, it was very helpful for us to go out. And, well, we almost lost the house today. I, 
Oh, oh really? that's what I heard. Oh, that tree. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Huge tree. Missed it. Straight down. It fell just right. It felt just right. And Those are some. It felt, <laughs> believe it or not, that's where the owner used to sit yeah. every day. Oh. oh my God. In his chair. That's karma. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So um, that was one of those big pines. That yeah, came just in. It's, it's, it's huge. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It, it, so would have destroyed the house. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I missed the site visit this weekend, but I went today and got to see the tree. Yes. Oh, boy, that <laughs> was a lucky fall, right? Yeah. I mean, it could have gone the other way and just wiped out all the electrical, everything. Right. It just went right. Right. This, this, this the, was the best place right. to fall of anywhere I could fall. <laughs> But while I'm talking, I say this, I, I think the new design, I think, really responds quite a bit to the, the concerns that I know I had previously. And I especially I like the way you reoriented the way the driveway, the garage faces. Yeah, and actually uh, for the driveway, again, you know, I, I didn't get into the site yet, but as we were standing on the site with Andrea, uh, one of the notations that I was mentioning was, you know, there's a there's a row of trees along Liberty. And there's an existing inlet to the driveway. I think I talked to you about this. Yeah. I think we're going to keep all that intact, you know. So where the existing drive comes in, it's further down Liberty, but it brings in really a nice gentle slope. So I think we're going to keep it that way. Great. Um, instead of even better. Come drive directly out. Yeah. Jonathan, is there? Um, I, I know you've tightened this up 10 feet. Is there any opportunity to to tighten it up further? I don't think Matt, <laughs> Matt I, it was a struggle to get it down to 300, let's just say. Yeah, because I think part of our initial concern was we just, um, I think we all thought that the, uh, the addition was too long relative to the, um, you know, the main house that was, what was existing. And I think I made the comment last time, if this was all new construction, this wouldn't be an issue, you know, but you're trying to, you know, preserve and protect the, you know, the main house. And show everybody on the on going down Main Street that that's that was still the main house and, and you're building off the rear. But you know you want to at the same time make make sure that you're not overpowering the uh, you know the existing features of the main house. You know, I still, it's I challenging. Think, it's challenging. And know? I think this gets there. I think you get uh, you know the massing of the main house is it presents itself. Yeah. And because it steps back the way it does, um, I, you know I think it does achieve that. I think the um, I think the only way to cut this back further is uh, again detaching the garage. Yeah, I know you and, like um, and uh, you know expanding the family room or something like that. And um, you know, that's that's the only way to get at. You know, look, you got 24 feet there, and uh, you know you extend the house a little bit further. You know, pick up another five to ten feet, but then you have the the garage out the out the rear. So. I just don't think he's willing to entertain taking that garage off. Well, the problem is the bedrooms. Of the oh, right, bedroom yeah, yeah, the, the master bedrooms above the garage, the program element. Yeah. So if we did that, we would need to replace that with, you know, a similar, similar area. So the massing of it, you know, wouldn't necessarily go down. It's just simply two, two different structures yeah. on the site. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. And maybe the, maybe the master is, instead of 18 by 21, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a little bit smaller. I mean, honestly, two feet is all I could really shave off that because that's, what you is know. The, what is the length of the, 20, of the existing, 20. of the existing, what's there now that we're taking off? 16. It's 16. And what is this here? 22. 22. So you're talking a difference of, and the, and the rest of it's all garage. So we're, what are we really adding on? Living space. Oh, yeah. Uh, not, not a lot as far as uh, the square footage on the, on the first floor, but it's the second floor. Yeah. Because if you look at from the garage to the back of the existing house, that's 22 feet. Yep. But coming off the back of the house existing right now that's coming off is 16 feet. So we're really only adding, you know, what are we talking about? Six feet and then a garage. So yeah. it's not okay. And as far as the, the garage itself and the dormer for the master bedroom, I try to create the roof pitches there so that the dormer is, is set in. I think it's about three feet off the edge there uh, to, to you know, accentuate the, uh, that line. <coughs> it's actually, I think it's more like four feet. You see, yeah, the, the dormer, the size of the dormer. You see how the, the garage is less of an issue with this one because it's in the rear and it's like you're coming at it from the rear and it's just uh, you're not, it's not visible. It's just it's tucked in there. So it's, you know what, it's just a, 
it's for the last application. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get so, that. So, Far yeah. less impacted. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, and you know, we got the question about <coughs> why this and not yeah, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, it's a different well, lot. It's a different lot. And you saw when you were there that how big the lot is. I mean, it just goes all the way back. It just continues. Yeah, it's a huge that. lot. Saw that. Well, narrow though. Narrow. But, yeah, long. Listen, I have a question. <clears throat> Um, and I, I've been looking at, at the interior layout. Yep. And I'm not really sure how to necessarily fix it if it's possible. But when I look at the house from the front, mm -hmm. to the left of the house where you have the two extensions going out, yes. is there any way to break those up with a window somehow? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're, are you talking about... Uh, Be either in the kitchen yep. or in the walk-in closet or something I'm just looking at those two sides and it's just yeah no I, I wall definitely could. facing I, the front I could put um, you know I could even re relay out the yeah I could do that on the second floor um, of the uh, the master bedroom I could yes, put a uh, dormer up there or you know a smaller window similar to what's actually on the house now in that back part which might might, might be nice which is you know more of an awning style window there um, yeah that, that could that could help a little bit with that uh, one of the comments that uh, Ben had made during the site visit was, um, you know, even showing that on this elevation because it is so far back. Yeah. You know, it's it's true uh, way it's drawn, but it's it's so far back that it's not it's not really gonna it's not gonna <clears throat> seen very easily. Okay. The the other thing is um, also I had the town come out and mark off trees how far back. So when you actually drive, you can't even see that because right. of the trees that are in front that are town trees are staying, obviously. So you don't even see that from the street. But I'd be happy to put a window there. Yeah, I'm just saying, you can't really see. What do you see. think, Ben? Uh, Michael? Well, it's or, or does that mean like less? I was just looking at it. To me, it just looks like a big flat piece of a uh, wall. But well, this flat. is a good, a good segue yeah. to my, I'm, I'm just struggling with the dormer style. Okay. Um, it, it looks like you've got barge rakes on, a sh on these shed dormers. So when I look at the um, east exterior elevation and then the proposed east and north exterior, um, Right, that, that's not what's in the neighborhood. So do you prefer a, a, just more of a flat, simple rake on the, on the dormers? Yeah, I think, I think on, a, on a shed like this, they just, when you, when you look at this east exterior elevation, which is marked as one, it's getting top heavy. Yep. And I, I think if those, if those, uh, um, those barge rakes got brought in. Yeah, what if, uh, what if I keep the crown coming down, but don't extend it? Right, okay. I, I, I like that detail, actually, I could do that. So then the, the only, so now if you take a look at A4 proposed east and north, or sorry, two is uh, north exterior elevation on A4, you have a, uh, a singleton dormer there, mm -hmm. and again, it, there's a there's a top heavy. It, it's it's top heavy. Can can how how would it? Did you did you do a study on perhaps a doghouse? I you know it's funny. I that would be usually my preference to do a doghouse. Yeah. But it seems when I present those to the board, it's not your favorite. Well, I <laughs> I, think, I, I wanted these to be simple. That's why. Yeah, I chose, and, chose and I stuff. can see what the struggle might be here. You'll have a doghouse with this singleton window, which will be appropriate, but then you have these triples. The other one's right. And you're going to have a much taller ridge as a result yeah. in those dormers in order to keep the, the right. all the pitches the same. Hmm. Um, what about bringing in? Barge rakes on those too. Oh yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I th I think so because they're top heavy. Yeah. So that might make the difference. Yeah, I could, I could absolutely do that. Um, but then to Tomas's on on the front elevation, that is going to be significantly recessed. It, that's really not an appropriate view of the house. It's just nobody would ever get that perspective. Right. So I'm always okay. I'm reluctant to put something there because I think you're adding even more something. You, it's getting becoming even more busy, and you may actually be drawn to the fact that there's a ridge there. Um, and I guess if you put something in the kitchen, you're going to lose your upper cabinets, and it's going to be a 
on, to was, on top of the countertop was anyway. From the interior as, as well. So it's going to be a shorter I window. It would be shorter. Um, it would be a little tight in that, that, right. uh, that elevation. I, can't, mm -hmm. I would love to extend it out a little further, but I'm really close to the setback there. Now, are you, are you making any changes to the front facades, yes. uh, the, uh, the rake detail? No. Uh, well, I mean, it's other than replacing what's there, it's going to match. And it's just you see. But you're keeping, the, keeping, that, keeping yeah. it the same. And, you're and just repair. Be, yeah, exactly. Okay, but then you did some window changes. Yeah, so at the second floor windows, and this is really just my preference. I feel like the first time I see, I saw this house, the existing two windows on the second floor are spaced, in my opinion, too far apart, and they're too Short. small. Exactly. So I wanted to bring them in a little bit and make them a little bit taller. Okay. So you're going, oh yeah, okay. You know, and I, and I could, I could probably bring the windows maybe four inches higher still. I mean, uh, shorter than the new ones because um, I, I want them to be smaller than the first floor. But I just felt like what was there now was just, um, and like I said, this, this, uh, this house had burned down in the, uh, I guess, the 1920s or something. Yeah. So I think when they built it again, I don't think they took into account the, the correct window spaces on the second floor. No, I would say that's an improvement, your, your west exterior elevation. And so are they, the first floor and the second floor windows, are they the same height? I think right now they're four inches smaller, but I might make them eight inches smaller. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I'd like to make them a little bit smaller, but it, it's, it's, you know, you wouldn't really notice too much of that difference. So then my last question is I missed, I missed um, the discussion about the square footage. Um, yeah, I think are we before, adding 50% uh, or more? I think so. so. It's all I'm drawing a one, I believe. All right, so oh, the, I see 13, eight, 1390 is what's there, adding 1860. Well, yeah. Um, Without the. So what's, what's there now is 1785. What's there? Okay. What, yeah. Okay. And now, out of the 1860, is part of that the garage or is that just living space? That's just the living area. Yeah. So just over a 50% add. Yep. Okay. Uh, no. 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 no, no, no that's not, that's not really because so, that's 100%. It's more than a double. Oh, it is. It's under 100. It's 100%. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. It is a doubling. It's We're going from 1785 and adding another 1860 to it. But but really, because the garage is attached here and it's 24 by 24, you're adding another, you know, you're you're adding 600 square feet on top of that. Okay. You could also argue that I could vault the whole space and make it. You know, it's, it's a volume number than versus it, a floor th number. That's, that's right, Jonathan. I agree with that. And I think, I mean, this house is so small Yeah, exactly. to begin with. And I think, you know, there are a lot of houses in the district, particularly in this area, that have are of a similar scale. They've just grown over yeah. however many years. This just happens to be one that hadn't yet growing all at once. Um, right. This would not be out of character in the neighborhood. Right. And I think what you've done to sort of pull that side in, keep the other side that you're bumping out similar to what's there, I think you're preserving a lot of that main house while just sort of adding a bit toward the back. So we haven't um, gone down the window, uh, you know, all the finishes yet. Um, so we can have a discussion on that at some point too. So I'll put it into it right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you've got some proposed finishes on your drawings. Yep. Uh, I assume that's. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, you're yeah, looking we, to do. We haven't talked about that yet. I mean, with you guys. Yeah. I mean, why don't you? Yeah. So basically, you know, just to match your kind. So the the existing is, is shingle siding. Um, and we we can keep that, but I, I think it's more appropriate to do uh, clapboards. On this hose, so that's what I would would like to do, um, and then obviously, uh, if you can do simulate simulated without divided light wood windows, we'll do that, and I'll, I'll find a an appropriate uh, manufacturer that you guys uh, approve, and also that is within your budget. That would be nice. And obviously, uh, probably wood shutters, you know, natural materials. In regard to the existing windows, I know some you're trying to change the size. Are any of them um, of the same size as you're proposing now, and can they be used 
um, in this application because I think you've got yeah. six over six, but in reality, are they six over one? Yeah, yeah, the, the existing ones are six over one, which I, you know, we, we could go, I, again, go back to that, that, that same philosophy. I just don't think that was appropriate for this type of house. Um, so I went with the six over six. Um, you know, I would prefer to replace, I mean, not rep use any of the, the old windows, but I understand what you guys are looking for there. Such bad shape. Yeah, they are terrible shape. They're terrible shape. Like, um, you know, somebody just wish, whispered in my ear um, about, <laughs> <laughs> somebody. about maybe a little bit of differentiation between the the um, the main house existing and the rear, like through either you know one shingle, less it's clapboard. Or oh, but she just got to su su uh, yeah. suggest that. Yeah. So just a, so Dude. since we are since we are doubling the size of this, maybe it would that would work work well some way of differentiating the two yeah yeah so and make the, uh, the 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 existing portion collapse and the what, what's the, what's what is oh. the front now it's it's shingle it's yeah shingle. so shingle that. and then go shingle two clapboard so um that's very characteristic of that this house, house. Really? Okay. so i think the like thomas said keep the little house shingle and then the addition you can use the clapboard. Oh, i was going to go the opposite but that's fine well, would it matter if I did the whole house shingle? That'd be fine. Of course, that's one of the... Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> I don't know. How do you think... What do you think about that? I don't think either or. It doesn't matter to me. It was just a question. I, I, I just like the whole idea of, like, doing the two different things so that you really sort of, like, had an idea of what was the original and, and what was the addition. Um, yeah. I don't have an, an issue with the size of the addition whatsoever just because the original is so small in size, um, but if there was a way to sort of keep them separate. No yeah, I, I agree. Yep. No issue with that. Uh, the, the chimney, that must, that's going to be a thin brick. Uh, it's a, say that again, it's a veneer. A thin, a thin brick design. That would yeah. be like a wood substrate. Correct. Thin, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you all the trim is all wood. Correct. Yeah. Right. Cedar, uh, asphalt roof. How's the foundation, you think, in the basement? Do you think you're going to have to jack it up? Uh, <laughs> it's not great. I know. Well, you saw the rest of the house. Right. Basement's not much different. I, we were down there. Yeah, what, yeah. What do you think? I, I don't know. What do you think? Hopefully not. So what, what, what we're going to probably have to do is when we excavate for the full basement, which is what's going to be under the, the addition towards the back, I imagine we're going to have to repour uh, at least the rear portion of that foundation. Um, you know, as you saw, there's a full yeah. basement, and then it goes to a crawl space, and that actually might help us a little bit because it's it's not as deep. So I, I imagine there's some portion of it that's just going to simply fall apart. So we'll replace and fix whatever it does. But yeah. I, I can't imagine it because especially where the design. So on the Liberty Road side, we're inboard, right? So we right. we can we can allow that to stretch in a little bit and then cut it and remove whatever we need to. Right. On the other side, we're actually connecting back. So on that piece, we can do the same thing where I'm not as concerned of what kind of issues you have at the d dimension that we're overlapping. As, l as long as once we're beyond, then we can start digging. So it shouldn't really impact the foundation too, too much. But again, it's not a great foundation. No, so. no, it's, it's gonna be challenging. The whole house is challenging. <laughs> Are you keeping the furnace? It's <laughs> a gem. It's a gem. Good to be a keeper. You looking for one? <laughs> Definitely not that one. Yeah. I'll try not to go down there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, are there any other comments? You might? Okay. Would you like to make a motion? I'm not a voting member. Ben, ben, did, you, ben yeah. did you want to see some window changes or some? Um, <clears throat> I mean, do you want to see some? Um, do you want to see some more sketches? Um, with some with some options on the windows. My only comment to that is, if we're looking for things to to find a, an excuse to come back again, I think time is of the essence with uh, with my client here. Yeah, I, I'd I'd be okay if that got submitted to Andrea. That gives us a narrow a narrow. We're basically going to get rid of the 
the barge detail. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that, that was my only struggle: is the barge detail and get rid of this. So, as so far it's not just so it doesn't look overweight on top. Yeah. yeah. You still you still okay with a crown? So if a crown goes on, let's say a one by six. Yeah, and I think the, I think the expectation would be at the garage gable that faces Liberty. Yep. That would be a similar detail to the main, okay. right? Yes, the the main the main uh, uh, roof line, but right. then the dormer we would then reduce. Right, a simpler. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm 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 comfortable with with that being submitted to Andrea. Do you want to you want to see it? You guys want to you want to approach it? Uh, I don't. Personally, I don't need to see it. I think if it gets submitted for the record to Andrea and she can, she can share it okay. uh, with everybody, I think I'd be okay with that. Good. What do you guys? Yeah. Okay. I, I can make the motion. I can try for the motion here. If you want me to? We'll um, chime in to help you out. Okay. Thanks, David. <laughs> Tag team. Okay. Um, might need help. Okay, so we're 1040 Main Street. So I'd like to make a motion uh, for a certificate of appropriateness for 1040 Main Street. Uh, revised drawing submitted September 26, 2019. Um, as drawn with the following exceptions, main body of the house to remain shingle. Um, that is original volume of the house to remain shingle. Dormers, shed dormers, um, barge rakes to be removed for a simpler <coughs> crown, crown rake combination mm -hmm. detail. That's all shed dormers. Um, all trim to be wood. Uh, with the, the exception would be, um, Jonathan, in the back where you've got this, uh, in the front and the back where you have this, this um, skirting detail. That can be synthetic because it's in contact with the ground. Do I have that on here? I don't yeah. know if I have a water table board. I don't think you didn't call them out, but it's on A3. If you want to take a look at Oh, on the, on the porches, elevation. yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Doing aluminum gutters? Yes. Round downspout? I'd like to, yeah. Okay. Um, you'll have to submit cut sheets for exterior lighting yep. to be submitted to Andrea. Um, the These dormers, these dormers, uh, a drawing submitted to Andrea. Uh, all this will be detailed in the construction drawing set as well. Right. Which okay. I'll, I'll give it to her. Um, windows. Right. So the windows. Yep. This is where I need help. So, so the windows on the existing house, what your plan there is for? To replace them with this uh, simulated divided light windows. Do you guys get a? So on. You guys gonna look at the original? Yeah. Wouldn't that usually be be a true divided? No, uh, on this one wood. Yes, I mean if they can be if they can be repaired, we prefer preservation. Yep. So we're we're talking about let's see one two three four five. Anything six. on the existing house? I'm just kind of seven seven windows. With the understanding that you're changing the front facade. Yep. And then the rest of the windows can be simulated divided light. Anything that's new construction, simulated divided light wood, um, manufacture of, of of your liking. Yep. What if the windows can't be repaired? So come back to us or g give Andrea a call, and then we'll we'll figure that out. Because they're in, like, the See, house, they're so we do know the the house burned down in, in the twenties, right? So we know they're they're twenty nineteen twenty four. Okay, so they're max a hundred, but you know, look, if you can if you can work with those windows, and Problem and if you need if if you need somebody that that does that, we can provide that too a list. So the layout though with the glass is six over one right now, and I, I that I might just, be hard to find. Well, it's just that. So, do all the windows need to be six over? I just don't find that to be the correct window choice. Um, I'm, I'm I'm comfortable with the main volume being six over one, and then a six over six on the addition. I think that would point out the fact that you've got an addition. Mm -hmm. 
Does that? I, I don't. Know, I just find that to be a little bit broken up, but that's fine with me. Yeah. Let me just. Uh, I think that's also a differentiating feature. What do you, What do you guys think? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Or you can do six over one if you wanted. We'll yeah, or we can just do the, I, We may just carry it through if that's the case. You don't. You have so the, the, then, for purposes of the certificate, mm -hmm. six over one or six over six, with the understanding that the original windows in the main volume will be studied for um, repair. The front door. Okay, you say wood. Yeah, usually I expect a Simpson door there. Okay. Wood shutters. Yep. House colors to be submitted at a later date. Yep. So right now the drawing says kind of cedar kind of collaborate light. on the old structure. I think he's like right. No, we we pointed out that yeah. that would be shingle Shingles. on the original volume, White clapboards on the rear. Yeah, maybe. I mean, but I'm planning on the house saying the color it is now white. White with black shutters, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not planning on doing it, you know. If okay. I change it, can I, do I have to let, I'll let you guys know, but. You just let Andrew yeah, tell Yeah, I think I'm, my, my plan is to go white. Okay. White, white trim, black shutters. Door, front black door. door. Black door. Yeah. Architectural shingles. Yeah. The roof. On the roof, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Uh, garage door. Overhead garage doors. Wood carriage style 16 light. Okay. What am I missing? I think you covered it. Okay. okay. Um, if you want to do any hardscaping, you can come back and talk to us at that point. So it, it just sounds like the dormer detail, the cut sheets for any lights, exterior lights, and color if you decide to change it and that would be it is there a second second all those in favor aye aye, aye. thank you Opposed? thank you thanks appreciate thank it hey. thank, you. thank you take some photos would you before, before and after, after. Well, take the photos the photo the <laughs> <laughs> would you would you let our chairwoman know she can come back in <laughs> Oh, let Virginia know she can I'll come back in. Yeah. Well, she's recused on the next one. Oh, right? no, she the is. next one, so she's oh, got to okay. sit out there. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. I lost my agenda. Can't mind in all this. Okay, hey, the next hearing is 34 Main Street. Hey, good, good evening. How are you? Good. Welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the um, application. It looks like a new signage on the building as well as signage on the stone wall in the front. Right. So out front is uh, there's kind of an issue because there's no visibility of that building from Main Street. So we kind of looked around for the best place to put a sign, and it seemed like that granite wall, uh, you know, the sign will be all, uh, you know, wood, and the eagle will be all hand carved, and uh, it's 50. The uh, building department, I thought it was a wall sign, and it could be bigger than that, but they said that it's not on the wall of a building, it's on a this granite wall, so they consider it a ground sign. Oh. So it has to be 15 square feet or less. So okay. I've kept it to 15 square feet. Uh, I did uh, what I what I submitted was is not exactly what the sign is going to look like, but I did have new little rendering today, so everybody can see more specifically. Close-up of the sign with the details. The next page is, shows it on the uh, on the wall, and the uh, last page is just a couple of carved eagles that I've done to show you examples of what wall you can expect. It's just me spreading out. <laughs> oh. so. Thank you. You're welcome. 
So that's the sign out front. <coughs> I don't know if anybody has any questions on that or. Um, I've got a couple of questions. So the dimensions are just a little different from They're a little here. different, but it's still here. within the 15 square feet that the town right. will allow. And so this there. is the latest and greatest. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The other one was just a sign that the historical society has, and I, you know, the eagle is kind of beat. And <laughs> I thought I should show more what it's going to look like. And how is that getting attached to the stone okay so what we would generally do on that is uh mount aluminum angle to the wall and then attach the sign to the edge of the angle so you don't see any attachment through the face of the sign okay so there'd be four aluminum clips on the that it will mount you know lag into the granite wall and then uh, into the edge of the sign So they go behind the sign. You don't see. Right. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions on the sign while we're on it? Looks like all wood, whether yes. it's pine or mahogany or combination. I uh, I'm getting arthritis in my hands, and I don't like to carve mahogany eagles anymore. So right. I'm do it out fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's the What's the projection of the sign? Uh, At its greatest point. Probably uh, five inches, five or six inches. Because the white frame would be raised uh, looking at it, and then it, the uh, yellow is a quarter round molding that would drop back to the background, and then the uh, banner and the eagle would be cut out of a couple of different pieces of, you know, the banner all cut out of one inch thick piece of material and shape that, and then the eagle would be cut out of a piece of two inch material and carved that all right. shaped up. And the eagle will be all finished in gold leaf, which it doesn't show well on the rendering, but that's why I added the uh, pictures in the back to show what my carved gold leafed eagles look like. Yeah. How do these um, typically work with exposure? Gold leaf holds up great outdoors. Uh, I wouldn't imagine you'd have to do any maintenance to that sign for 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the, the outline of the trim, it looks like you want to try to pick up some of the tones of the wall. Is that, is that the plan? I mean, you don't want to do like a, you know, a stark white. But no, I would, I would probably uh, antique that a little bit so it doesn't look stark white. Right. So you want to. So something more like that. Yeah, blend in, blend in with the wall, kind of pick up some of the. A little walls. bit, but yeah, you'd still want it to stand out. Oh yeah, no, that eagle's gonna stand out. Yeah, it will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just you do. Any other questions? How, how, do, how does how do you all feel about the white frame? I think that's what Hans was just saying. Yeah, I think is it. When you say sort of antique, is it more no, like I would this? do it more, uh, you know, something like that. I'd probably take some, mix up a little bit of a stain and wipe it over it and then wipe it off so that it tones it down a little bit from being stark white. Is that something more in keeping with your 2A drawing? Yes. Right. More like that. Does the, um, does the green pick up the, uh, on the shutters? It'd be this. I think they used Essex green up on the building, and I would use the same on that. Same, and the, and the lettering is um, black. Black. Okay. And the banner would be, if you look at the, uh, like the Murphy eagle on the back page, the banner would be more on that in those tones, and shaded and highlighted mm -hmm. to highlight the carving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, it's yeah. You know, anything to happen to it? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want anything to happen to this. This is no. going to be something. And any comments on the letters, or did you already talk about uh, up on the on the building? On, on the building on the fascia. With the proposal on the building, is that getting carved into the? Wood that's there, or is it a separate sign? No, they're going to be separate, separate letters that will okay. be pinned onto the building. We, okay. uh, 
All right. We'll make the letters. We'll put uh, aluminum pins in the back of the letters. We'll put a paper pattern up on the fascia, drill all the holes, a little bit of silicone, and yep. yeah. attach the letters. Okay. Very similar to what we did at Hingham Institution for Savings. Bangham. They had yeah. yep. gold leaf letters that we did. Hey, what, what, do you, what do you think about lighting this? The sign down below or? Um, you know, maybe the front door, maybe the sign below, both. I mean. Uh, I don't see really how you're going to light the one down below. I think yeah. uh, my hope is that the square is fairly lit up at night anyway and that the gold leaf will, if anybody's looking, they'll see it. Well, trying to get power there is going to be the challenge. Be tough. Tough. Be tough to light. Yeah. It would be nice. It would be. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. it's... For another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> For another meeting. That would be nice. Yeah. Okay. Light it from across the street. There you mm -hmm. go. Or you could light it from below. Carol Ann's, you could just throw spots right yeah. across at it. Um, I, I just need to mention one thing, that the um, this particular sign will have to go before the ZBA. I know. We're yeah. in the process of doing that permit yeah. also because it's it does there's not enough setback. Yeah. And But I did notice that down the street there's a... Uh, for the old ship church, they don't even—they have the same kind of wall, but it's not even set back. And there's a sign out on that that's right on the property line. So I'm hoping the ZBA will yeah. consider this. Up. I don't see where else they can really put a sign. Well, that's that yeah, that would be for the building because it's up so high. And you know, originally we talked about putting, you know, big quarter boards on the building, but. They still wouldn't be very visible from down on Main Street, so it really wouldn't be as effective. Well, hopefully they will. Hmm? I'll see how important it is to put it right there. I think it's a good spot. Yeah, beautiful signs. Thank beautiful you. work. Um, okay, are there any other questions? Anybody? Okay. okay, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate appropriateness 34 Main Street. Um, drawing one for the proposed uh, proposed sign at the front door. Drawing one dated uh, 3-5-2019. And then uh, the proposed sign on the on the uh, granite wall. This is dated 10-17-2019. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That was easy. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. And you completed a project with us. <laughs> okay. Actually, would we want to just hold on one For second? Sure. I think. Um, yeah, I'm going to come gonna back in. Thank you. And I'm going to recuse myself. So. Here she is. Okay. So we're on 45. Yeah, okay. Hi. Welcome. Sorry to keep you waiting. We are building a pool, and we need to enclose the yard with a six-foot fence. The yard is already enclosed on two sides with two fences that belong to our neighbors. One is black on the left-hand side, and we would like to extend that to, we'd like to hook into their fence and extend it to hook into the back corner of our garage, um, which is, I don't think visible at all from the street. Maybe if you stand just the right way, but with the trees, I don't think you can see it. And then on, if you're facing the house on the right-hand side, um, Greg and Maria Murphy have a cedar fence, and we would like to hook a new cedar fence into the back corner of our house with a double gate so we can get in and out with a lawnmower or whatnot. Um, and I've tried to provide all the pictures that I could, and 
the natural, the double gate would <coughs> be, it would match the existing fence with the nice ring type hardware. The fence companies have told me that the double gates are custom, so I don't have an exact photo. It would just match the fence with that style hardware. Matching the Murphy's fence, your, your neighbor? Yes, on the right-hand side. And on the yeah. left-hand side, it'd match the Franks. Got it. And we have a picture of the Franks. You have a picture of Rear the side of the house showing a butter's fence. Yes. Fence. OK. <clears throat> So Lisa, you want to do um, collars? What what are the um, you want to do? You want to match the fence on the left, or what do you? So you the do Frank's fence on the left is black, and I would like to match that. Okay. I don't. There's just a small portion that you may or may not see from the road. Okay. I've tried to provide photos. Yep. It's a very small portion if okay. you're standing in the right way. Yep. And then on the right hand side, I would like to match the Murphy's fence. Okay. So natural, is that a natural? Natural, okay. yes, it's natural cedar, I believe. Yep. And the other uh, Murphy's fence is um, natural all the way around? On the right. It goes, the Franks and the Murphy's both have fences that just run yep. straight. There's this na a natural collar on the right. As you look at the house on the f yes, it's on the right. Yes, it is on the right. Well, and that how, how about the rear? What color is that? The rear, uh, I don't know yet. I don't think you can see that at all from the road, though. Okay. And the Franks and the Murphys are in agreement with. Yes, they both said it was not a problem for me to hook into their existing fences. And you're thinking the double gate will be, um, what, two, three foot sections? Is that? Yes. Something like that? That's look, I mean, does that look about what this is? Yeah. OK. That would provide enough access for a yep. long or a small yep. bobcat. Yep. And, and no gate on the other side? There may be a, I think, one gate on the other side, a single gate on the other side. OK, so a three foot gate over there, maybe? Three foot in width, yes. Okay. So the driving force for this is that you need a fence to enclose a pool. Correct. And the way my lot sits, because the lot runs this way and the house sits this way, I have no other access to my backyard other than onto the right hand side that's why I need the larger gate on that side sort of like a fence variation of a party line yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when you're dealing with existing mm -hmm. structures that right. don't belong to you right Other comments? Um? No. Okay. Sure, I can do one. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I thought you never asked, then. then. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. Okay. It's <laughs> so straightforward. All right, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 45 Middle Street to uh, construct two fences, one on the left side of the property. Um, the one on the left uh, will be a black fence with a three-foot gate to match the existing uh, fence that is on the left side of the uh, house by the abutters. Um, fence to be six foot high. Um, fence on the right side of the house uh, will be six foot, five, all, six foot high also with uh, two three-foot uh, gates. Uh, fence to be um, uh, cedar uh, unpainted to uh, match the existing on uh, with the butters on the right hand side um, hardware to be black um, metal hardware and, uh, 
That's it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Have Lisa. a great night. Hey, your garage came out. Oh, nice. thank you. Yeah, do you like it? You happy? Love it. Good. Great. It's funny, this particular house, you've got so many things that we've never had in our whole life. I've yeah. never had a garage. You've been at air conditioning. Not even in ice makers. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's living large. <laughs> thank you so much. OK, you. bye, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Great. Thanks for your Everybody patience. <laughs> no. We don't want too far away. No. Yes, you must just have that in your Jeep. I said in the office. It's important to point out that this drawing is before the storm last night. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What have well, pieces of fences bit. that are missing? Yeah, and, there might be pieces of fences oh. missing. And we had a microburst or something, and just our, our yard was a garage sale this morning. Very, oh. very large limbs came oh. down. And we've had bad storms over the last number of years. Right. You know, really wet snow, and, and this caused more damage than every storm put together. There was something big last night. I'm in the thing. Yeah. It went from like, like zero to right 60, down. just like down. Yeah. And, then it, and then it went down again. And it, yeah. Right. It was written there was on the corner of a school street in Pleasant. Yeah. There was a tree. It was this big around. The whole thing went down. Oh, oh. my gosh. So it was, it was in between the, uh, the sidewalk and the street. So, it, you know, microbursts or something out of the ordinary because the, yeah. wow. these trees have survived, you know, 40 years of winds like that. It's just something, something else. It's a little karate chop to the Kinder's fence over here and then to the Covenies fence over there. Oh. So we'll be doing some fence work regardless. Okay, I'm Sean Papich, Sean Papich Landscape Architecture, 222 North Street, which is losing some shingles right now in the mo at this moment in time <laughs> of Popolo's Candy. Um, here at Hingham. I'm Jim McEwen, 59 School Street. Mm. So the proposal tonight for the application for a certificate of appropriateness involves uh, primarily a swimming pool that we're talking about behind the existing barn. It also includes a pergola behind the barn. There is going to be a pool house. There is intended to be a pool house. That isn't really ready. The intent is to uh, uh, kind of work hard for the pool approval because there's an intent to do some construction yet this fall so that they hopefully can be swimming uh, early summer. So uh, the pool area sits behind. The street is all the way out here, School Street. For the pool area, the existing barn, the driveway. So I don't know when it was that we relocated the driveway from here over to here, mm -hmm. but that was seven uh, years ago. Enough years ago that this property line was on there before, so it's different now. So the intent was to have a swimming pool kind of in the middle of that rear yard, pool house off to this edge, visible from the house. Swimming pool itself, I believe, will not be visible from the street or the public right of way. And none of the hardscape, which will be stone, is going to be visible from there. Um, there are two existing field stone walls that we did several years ago. And uh, the intent is to put the pergola on center with the barn so directly behind. I don't know that that's really going to be visible. You might be able to catch a glimpse of it because the intention is to use a mesh or cedar fence on these front sides. The intention for the rest of the fence is to match what is existing here on Thomas and Louisiana's property. We have pictures of that there and a couple of enlargements of that there. That's a cedar board fence. Pick it top. Correct, exactly. That's the picture of it. Yep. So we we're intending to use that along the edges again with the pool. Um, you have to have six foot pool enclosure. So that's the intention. It will be uh, cedar with bleaching oil. Intent on the mesh fence, which is this sample. That other picture is from an Olin residence. It's in the mm -hmm. backyard from that.
cool house it was done. It's got, it filled in pretty well in about a season and a half of, from the planting. Mm -hmm. So that's what that other picture's from. That's the sample of it. And the bank out. So that's cottage, cottage. The last time we used yeah. that this or yeah. it's the, the last time. Yeah, the bank out. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. You're exactly at the end of Bank Avenue, you look to the right. That's filled in real solidly there. So that would be just in those two areas. It sits about 184, 185 feet from the street itself. It was quite a ways back. Look at the photos. There's going to be uh, proposing to do a stepping stone path from the rear of the house back into the rear yard, the pool area. We have a picture of a pergola also shown on the plan. We haven't really finalized that at this point, but um, that's a, a pretty good example of what we propose in this area. Again, that's quite a ways back. It might be some, might be some visibility looking down the driveway to it, but it's screened primarily by the barn. There's also going to be some other plant material in front of the fence, as well as behind it. Be some evergreens on the back side of it. There's some work that was just being wrapped up over here on the last year's property, and they put some evergreens on the back side. Also, share that order. The other area of work that we were doing involves a terrace that um, there was a terrace approved when the work that was being done on the property uh, before there was a terrace already approved for here someplace way back in the paperwork or in the files, intending to come down to a bluestone patio with a low field stone wall, low seat wall, and a fire pit. There was a funding shortage after the <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> That's why we do these things in phases. <laughs> but um, so that's uh, gonna come to fruition now is what we're proposing anyway. That'd be a two foot tall wall, 21 to 24 inches. Just so note the placement again, Sean, if you would. Yeah, so the existing porch is right here, right now. If you take a look at the pa that second page, you'll see some snapshots looking down that area. Second page shows some existing conditions, looking both into the rear yard of the uh, pool area. And then there's a couple shots where I was in the middle of the yard shooting that uh, to the porch. And I was out kind of a little bit off of the sidewalk into the yard and shot that photo along the side of the house. So that's looking straight down here. And is that's that, where that existing porch is. Yeah. Is that porch getting extended to where the spot ultimately is? We're, we're intending, ultimately, we're intending to do, uh, proposing to extend the porch area into a spot. We did not include that with this piece because we thought that that would be something you would want to see more detail on. Mm -hmm. um, it it's going to be the same exact details, but we wanted to include that with pool house work and with the architect. But the intention is to. The idea with the spa would be, though, to have it built into the ground, maybe with just a, a, a lip into of the, the deck. deck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it will sit at grade with the deck. Right. Is there any fencing in between that area and the street? No, there's not. No fence. There was a fence we were looking at a long, long time ago. We didn't do it then. We right. discussed it here, and we all decided not to do it then. We were originally going to do one here. Mm -hmm. Question: um, Why not put the terrace off the off the back for a little more privacy? This area here. Yeah. We just like it out into the yard area. We were always going to do something out into the yard area and take advantage of it. Some of this evergreen planting that we did here right now really affords us that privacy that they never got into the kitchen area, dining area. And so, mm -hmm. um, so it's always the area that we wanted to spill out off of that living area. So the, the patio is a bluestone, and then it is, is it also a bluestone, but they're just a rough cut? Yeah, irregular stone, right. stepping stones, yeah. Okay. So there's existing ones that were done. Uh, I'm still trying to remember what that seven was. Seven years ago. Thank you, seven years ago. Six years ago. And uh, old granite slabs, granite apron here, antique granite. That's all been installed in okay. seven years, along with the field stone wall. So we were going to continue, continue the irregular bluestone stepping stones. Right. That was the intention. 
So on this drawing, the, the pool area is new, the fence is new, Correct. the fire pit area is new, new yeah. and everything else is existing. Correct. Okay. And is that is that a that's a grill on the terrace towards that, the front? That would just be a place where if you want to set it. Okay, it got it. But nothing built in. Not built in. You could also drop that around the other side too, or wherever you want to find. And the pergola material is wood. We would, yeah. You see it. Fence type A. Um, the one to keep the visibility from the house. And feel it open to the pool as well as when in the pool area, still keep the visibility looking back out to the front corner of the property. And why a fence at all then? Uh, because pool enclosure requires it by the state. Oh, you're going to need this, um, yeah. I see, for the pool. Otherwise, we'd say, nope, we don't. Yeah, we wouldn't. Cohasset's adopted that now. Oh, really? Six if you have an auto cover, they're not going to require a fence at all. Oh. Which to me is a little oh. frightening, to be honest. If you have what? Oh. Say that again? They're an not requiring cover. a fence whatsoever. <laughs> if you, mean you have an auto automatic cover. cover. There's a locking a key. automatic cover. There's a key that's you also have to turn that's visible working. of the and pool. Or if you don't, I, it's closed at the time. I think it's a little yeah. scary, to be oh, honest. It sounds scary. Yeah, I could stand if it wasn't a six foot tall. Uh, requirement by Hingham that they're the only place in the Commonwealth that has it that I know of. There might be somebody else that has it, but I don't know of them. So um, Coas is four foot. Is is the state? Yeah. Citroen does five. Oh. In, but, uh, the, are these mesh fences something the commission has uh, dealt with before? I, yes, it's new to me. Uh, so that one of the photos. There's a photo there at yeah, the, the end of the, the, the Owens property on. If you look at it, I've got many images yeah. of that, even in a tablet. It really goes away. It really becomes invisible yeah. from the street or from any other. Yeah. You get back 30 or 40 feet, you can't even tell there's a fence there, to be honest. And yeah. No, that's easy to believe. I've just I've never seen it at the commission before, my, personally. Yeah. How did we justify the synthetic nature of that material? It's metal. Yeah. But it's vinyl but it's covered, vinyl right? vinyl covered. This was the Olin's property, right? This is not. That one is not. That one is uh, one? Steamboat Lane. Oh. I think this is the first time we may have used it. Uh, it may have been the second. Third time. Longevity is one of the reasons to have that with vinyl coated. Um, if you go to a, like a galvanized or stainless, people think that the stainless lasts forever, but it's just stains less, essentially, but it gets rusty. It's rusty, actually, a lot more quickly than we'd like. And they don't do copper at all? No. Not that I know of. I mean, somebody someplace does copper, but I can't imagine the cost on the copper. Hmm. But we've approved that before, yeah. apparently. So okay. Thanks, you know, the black sort of just kind of goes away. Yep. You, know, you don't really... Yep. So, so Sean, you're looking. So we're we're looking at the terrace off to the left hand side of the residence. Correct. The um, swimming pool, the fence, and the pergola. Yes. Okay. All the fences. Yeah. The fire pit, the antique granite fire pit, is also there. Um, that won't be real visible either. It'll be low. Lower than I've lost the pergola. Where does the pergola go again? Behind the bar on the center line. Behind the bar. Ah, it is visible okay. to some yep. degree, perhaps. I would think maybe in some way. Hardly visible, but it's back there. If that's 180 feet to here from the road, it's 240 mm -hmm. feet back or more. So.
And when you say pergola with screen panel, is that what's in the back on the on the picture here? Where yeah, the privacy screens. Correct. Got it. That lattice work. Okay. It's essentially a lattice piece yep. to grow something on. <clears throat> What, um, how do you want to, you want to do it white, that, that pergola, or do you want to match a, How do you feel about it? Do you want to match a trim of the house? Do you think something else? I mean, we're not, certainly not married to white. Yeah. Um, Good match trim you know, house, I right? think, you know, we yeah. kind of like the, the house colors. We'd probably do something consistent with that. Yeah. And when the pool house comes through, we would probably match up that same trim color, wouldn't yeah. you think? Yeah. So you I think it. even the fence, we would whatever color we might train or, or uh, stain the trim you know, our goal would be to make it as invisible as possible okay. it's a great view back from the street all the way back between uh, lashers and the Rowleys and so we want to keep that as open as possible right, so you pick up the colors of the trim and the columns on your porch on the pro yeah mm -hmm. you could yeah Other comments? Yeah. Looks like it might be in Southern Living Magazine sometime. Yeah. <laughs> I can make a motion. Southern Shore. I can make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Sure. Um, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 59 School Street um, for uh, the pool and fencing surrounding the pool is indicated in the drawings with fence type A uh, being the cedar post frame with black vinyl coated welded wire mesh and fence type B six foot high vertical cedar board with picket topper. Uh, in addition um, approval includes the pergola with privacy screen uh, pergola material and privacy screen to be wood uh, painted to match uh, existing house trim. Um, motion also includes the uh, new terrace off to the side of the residence as indicated in the drawings. Uh, currently not approved as part of the motion is the pool house or the extension of the porch and spa on the main residence uh, at this time. Plans dated September 26th. Yes. And then the the pergola color matched the trim color. Yes, of the trim house? color of the house. Yeah. Yeah. He did say that. He did. Yes. Fine with that. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Good luck. Right, thank you. Thank you. Stay late. Sure. Is there any further business? No, but I think it was Hans. Uh, maybe you can just talk to us a little bit about the what's been going on with the master plan as our as our representative. Sure. So um, we've had a a couple meetings of the uh, the master plan committee, and. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work going on behind the scenes, and you'll start. It'll start to be more visible in the next probably couple weeks or so. And um, it's going to be a multi-step kind of process. We're working with consultants that the town is bringing in. Uh, the last time a formal master plan was done was almost 20 years ago, so it needs to be updated. And um, you know the main main element right now is going to be um, getting input from the community about um, you know ideas such as what you like about Hingham what you don't like about Hingham just getting some input um, you know from as many people as we can so um, you know I don't know if it'll end up being a um, you know part of our process here with the Historic Districts Commission but I can certainly um, you know give all of you you know more input um, about it and, and ask for your uh, you, know, in, you know insights and maybe you know we could just have a you know maybe we have a one-off informal meeting when I can get input from all of you or uh, you know some other venue but um, you know as many people as we can get um, you know in front of this uh, to you know offer some insights on how they want to see 
you know, the, the town progress over the next, you know, 15 years or so, th these things really have like about a, you know, like a 10 year shelf life, but maybe we can get a little bit more out of it. You know, the goal is, and, and one of the headlines is, you know, getting us to the 400th anniversary, um, which is, you know, not that far away. It's, you know, uh, to, um, 2040, right? So, so that would be, um, you know, 20 years, but, um, or, you know, right? Yeah, so, so um, yeah, so we've had, uh, there were some meetings over the last couple of weeks, meeting with uh, kind of subcommittee meetings, meetings, we had a historic uh, preservation meeting um, where there was, I don't know, there was probably 20, 25 people in attendance, um, you know, just talking about things uh, that they felt were, uh, you know, important regarding you know, historic preservation and the direction we, you know, we want to go in, so. You know, the consultants are basically, they don't live in Hingham, but they're just trying to get as much input right now and understanding the town as best they can. Um, and then they're going to take, you know, all these ideas and, uh, and uh, you know, over, over the next, uh, next year, uh, come up with a, you know, master plan for the town. So that's the, that's the goal. So very interesting, a lot of work, a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, the committee has maybe, I don't know, 15 people or so. Uh, yep, um, and um, you know, uh, people are people are very well engaged, and um, and we had a meeting last night, and uh, it went well. And you know, next step is um, we're going to be doing some of these these little these little meetings around town, neighborhood meetings, um, you know, PTO, uh, hooking up with the schools. Um, any topics bubble to the top at this point? Um, you know, at, at, at all these different, um, you know, sub meetings, uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of data that was gathered already um, from from people that attended. So, the more people that are um, you know involved, and I'm talking all ages, that can give input into this, I think the the product will be better. So, that's uh, that's what's going on. So we're two meetings in, and uh, we're meeting. You know, once a month right now, but um, we all go home with some homework, and and uh, it's a uh, it's cool. It's cool. Are the minutes available to uh, the citizens? Yes. So there was um, there was a set of minutes that were approved, uh, very kind of high level uh, stuff um, at our last meeting last night, and there I'm sure there'll be some more minutes coming out from. So your voice transcripts are online yeah. too. Yeah, and there's uploaded. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And there's a lot of documentation. If you just go on the website, right, you can you can kind of get the, um, yep. you know, some documents related to the master plan. So. Yeah. Yep. Is there a schedule there, Sherry? For there upcoming? is a schedule. Yep. It's, it's on the website also. It's worth it to take a look because mm -hmm. you know your input is. Yeah. Would be important. Mm. So it's under. Is it under master plan? Yes, it is. Yep. Right on the town website. And all, all the documents are there. Well, this is certainly coming at a critical time for Hingham. It's important. Yeah, I mean, the last time this was done, you know, there were there was a lot of focus on the train, and uh, because of the master plan, um, you know, and a lot of work that Alec did and, and, and many other people around town, they were able to preserve, um, you know, the integrity of the downtown. That tunnel was was you know was built, um, so that was all around kind of that that plan. Um, you know, and then a lot of a lot of things happened with the uh, the 40B side. Um, you know, after you know after Erickson was uh, was built, Linden Ponds. You know, so you know there's been a lot of change there, and it's now it's just um, you know how do people feel about you know the infrastructure here at town, for instance. You know, do we have enough to you know support all the growth that we've had? Um, how are we going to handle all the traffic around town? Um, you know, what is was the idea for you know, for, for growth of the town in general, you know, we're almost up to 25,000 people now or so. I mean, what's, you know, where do we want to see that headed? You know, what do we need to support that? You know, do people want to see any growth? Um, so, and then we have, you know, all that, all that support around, um, you know, how do we make it, uh, you know, work the best for everyone? Great, thank you. Yeah. All right, shall we uh, adjourn? So moved. So moved. <laughs> you finally got a motion, Ben. <laughs> 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 All right, well, thank you.